Selamat siang, selamat pagi, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Once a participant also from United States, welcome to our international e-public forums that will focusing on the role of community on the cultural and natural heritage conservations is part of the 2021 International Online Summer Course on Jogja World Project City with the topic Balancing Creative Economy and Heritage Saujana Conservation to Foster Sustainable Development Goals. We have already started this program since April 9th and right now is the second month and will be proceed until the June 13. Today we are very honored that we have uh, our Director General of the Higher Education, Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, and technology, Professor Nizam. Thank you very much, Pak Nizam. But I call it my uh, Mas DJ. Mas as a brother, <laughs> brother DJ. And uh, I would like also to introduce our uh, panelists for today, who are also our collaborators for our programs. First of all, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Kyoko Kanki from Kyoto University. Welcome, thank you very much. Thank you for We have worked for how many years? Since 1998. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and uh, the second is uh, Professor Ulrike Herbert from TU Wien, Austria, uh, Vienna, Austria. We have uh, already uh, have collaboration since 2005. And today we will have also our students as a representative of the group of students 23 students that later on Ibu Dwita as a moderator will also explain to you uh, who are them is Mbak Mutia. And the last uh, presenters will be Professor Baikuni, our you, professor and faculty of Thank geography you. that Mas DJ already uh, knows him. Yes. Now, I would like to call upon Professor Nizam to give your opening remarks. Time is yours, please. Thank you very much, Mbak Sita. Uh, dear colleague, Prof. Yoko Kanki, Dr. Ulrik, uh, all the distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mas Baikuni, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning, very good afternoon to all of you. Shalom, Om Santi Santi, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Uh, it's an honor for me to join with you in this afternoon uh, for this uh, beautiful gatherings uh, between experts and students to celebrate uh, cultures culture. as the universal language of uh, humankind. It's an honor uh, for me also to uh, share with you uh, information about the transformation in higher education. Uh, please allow me to share screen. Uh, may I share screen? Oh, yeah, yeah. maybe uh, should uh, put Professor Nizam as a co-host, oh. Yeni, please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you about the 
current uh, policy or main policy in higher education to drive the our university to be more adaptive, more flexible, and more relevant to the dynamics of the development, both in social uh, social development, in culture, culture. as well as in uh, technology. We call it Campus Merdeka. Basically, it's emancipated learning where everyone can join our campus in preparing our youth to become more agile, more flexible, more culture uh, aware and fit with the development, uh, with the dynamic of the development. It's just a brief overview of the education system in Indonesia. There are more than 4,000 high education institutions, too many wow. uh, in, <laughs> in this country. More than 4,000 high education institutions, about uh, close to 600 universities, uh, 200 institutes, uh, and many uh, colleges uh in the form of school of higher learning academy uh, community college and polytechnics and we gather uh, currently close to 8.5 million students in indonesia with close to 300,000 lecturers and more than 34,000 study programs so diverse and so many uh, and the emancipated learning is basically to transform our university from a very uh, si uh, silo-minded uh, every student that goes into a certain study program do not have the opportunity to enrich the, uh, their knowledge their skills their uh, experience in other faculty or other programs for instance a student in engineering could not have opportunity to learn about uh, social science could not have could not have opportunity to learn about anthropology because they are they are they are learning in silo. So we disrupt that. We open up uh, windows, uh, doors, and walls between faculties uh, to allow students to have uh, up to one semester or twenty credits to take other subjects. Engineering students can go into philosophy, can go into economy, can go into communications. To enrich their, their competencies and to give them opportunities up to two semesters, up to two, one year or 40 credits to do experiential learning in whatever passion they are uh, aspired to be. So we move from prescriptive into self directed and flexible learning. And we put that into nine of campus activities like student exchange. Students can spend uh, one semester in Japan or can spend a uh, student from Jogja can spend one uh, semester up to one year in Papua and vice versa children from Papua can spend uh, one whole semester on one full year in Yogyakarta so they can cross culture and they can appreciate the difference and, and celebrate the diversity internship it is not only in industry but internship in whatever professional uh, fields students are aspired to be uh, engaged with uh, in their future so with the full six months, they can stay in design house, in industries, or in uh, bureaucracy, or in, in em uh, embassy. So those experience will be uh, will enrich the student uh, hard skills as well as soft skills before they uh, graduate from university. Teaching assistants currently more than fifteen thousand students go into rural villages to poor uh, areas of Indonesia to help teachers in uh, educating our young generations, our kids in elementary schools. So they help the teachers in uh, delivering uh, educations. Uh, research assistantship, students can have full time, six months uh, doing research with uh, professors or with research uh professionals uh fully engaged with the research uh, work humanitarian activities student can spend one uh, six months up to one year in helping with the disaster recovery in helping with the humanitarian activities uh all over the countries as well as uh, overseas entrepreneurships instead of the start entrepreneurships uh, start their business when they could not find any job, they can start uh, developing the startup prior uh, to graduation. So they can start 
to be an entrepreneur before they graduate. Micro credentials, students from architects can learn about artificial intelligence, about big data, about internet of things, so they can enrich uh, what they learn from uh, their uh, department, uh, subjects or courses that is not available in their department. And community empowerment, this is very, very, uh, very uh, favorite to our students. They can uh, have community development in rural uh, village, uh, uh, empowering about culture, about heritage, about uh, tourism, about sustainable development, and uh, many uh, good things they can spread uh, to rural village. And military service can be one of the options. Uh, and to transform the high education, uh, now every rectors have, uh, have to sign a contract with, with the ministry with eight key performance indicator. One is the uh, student employability. How many of the student graduates not only uh, receive a diploma, but they are job ready. They uh, even uh, already started their uh, job or their career prior to graduation. So those are the indicators, the main indicators. So the, the folk, uh, Campus not only focus on the certificate or diploma, but on the employability of our graduates. And second, uh, to make sure that student has that agility, that flexibility, that uh, wider uh, foundation experience in knowledge, skills, hard and soft skills, how many of the students uh, join this emancipated learning project through one semester out of campus activities at least. And similarly, our lecturer, our lecturers, our professors also can spend one semester, one full year, sabbatical leave uh, in other universities or in or in industry in design house uh, together with their students. So we open up the scope of learning not only in the classroom but to open the, the whole world as the uh, learning space. <laughs> Uh, and also we open our campus to welcome professionals to teach, to share their experience, to motivate our students to go into the professional uh, fields while they are still students. And this relates to uh, number seven, collaborative and part, uh, participative classroom. Our classroom uh, become more vibrant with project-based, case-based learning uh, approach from the professional uh, joining uh, the class. And also the output of uh, our lecturers, not only publications, but also something uh, for good, like in heritage uh, preservations, in engagement with the community, in engagement with society, empowering the, the uh, community society, as well as engaging with industries. And also we encourage our uh, study programs to engage with international partners world-class universities, world-class uh, institutions uh, globally, and to put international standard into our study program. And for that, the government also put resources in the form of uh, matching fund. So any engagement from industry, from partners to our university, any commitment, we will uh, spare the same amount of commitment from the government. So this will double the, the uh, commitment from industry to university, as well as to double the output from the uh, collaborations. Competitive funding, this is to uh, accelerate our study programs to transform into the 21st century uh, learning. Uh, and finally, for the emancipated learning pro uh, program projects, uh, government put youth resources uh, to, uh, um, uh, to implement that. So basically, we want to uh, accelerate the hexahelix or pentahelix or triplehelix collaborations between campus, uh, community, industry, government, society, uh, and everyone to work together in assuring that our students have the needed competencies, the needed hard skills, soft skills, uh, empathy, and professional uh, readiness uh, for them, as well as to bring research results from industry to go directly to the community, to go directly to the industries, 
and to uh, the betterness of the whole uh, community and society and nations. So we invite actually uh, opportunities for collaborations with our partners. It can be in the form of university consortium, like uh, consortium, university consortium on heritage, on cultural conservations, or uh, any other uh, good purpose. A joint project, uh, joint research, joint publications is very much encouraged. Curriculum development uh, to have a compatible curriculum, uh, join or uh, sharing uh, resource, sharing knowledge, as well as uh, engaging students uh, across countries. Student and staff, staff exchange is, of course, uh, we can uh, accelerate further. Internship in industries or industry in the long, uh, in the broad uh, sense, it can be a design house, it can be a uh, heritage center, it can be a cultural centers, it can be uh, any uh, professional activities and scholarships for our students to go abroad uh, to take both undergraduate, postgraduate, masters and uh, PhDs. And sabbatical leave, sabbatical leave for our lecturers or professors in industries or as well as in research center or in university. And we also welcome our class university to come to Indonesia whether uh, uh, to establish uh, joint programs with Indonesian partners or to establish its own uh, institution in Indonesia. And micro credentials, this is very important. Students can take, uh, we unbundle the university. So any institutions, world-class institution can offer micro university, whether that is uh, in culture, in heritage, in uh, creative industries or whatever, uh, we can accommodate that and consider that as a full 20 credits up to 40 credits hours or can be one semester to one year uh, of part of the student uh, portfolio as part of their graduations later on. And online learning during this pandemic is of course uh, very much welcome. Uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity and I hope this uh, very interesting and very important uh, joint activities between many universities and international partners, especially in heritage, in cultural preservation, in promoting the traditional uh, heritage is very much appreciated. Thank you very much, uh, Sita and everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Nisam. It was such very interesting movements that we have in Indonesia in our education system. And I think we all very happy to hear this one. And we will think in our uh, activities in the future because based on this summer course, we will continue and open more collaborations with other university, private sectors, institution worldwide. So I think this is, will be very important. And can we have your PowerPoint presentation that we sure, can share all the parts? Okay. Once again, yes. thank you very much. Uh, I would like to, to, to add, Mbak Sita, that oh, oh, yes, please. also uh, welcome, uh, invite uh, any uh, partners and institutions that would like to join to offer those micro credentials, engagement with uh, deeper engagement with our universities in whatever sort. Uh, we we uh, set aside quite a huge uh, resources uh, on that. So thank you. Thank you very much. I think the invitation is open so for all of us. So our colleagues worldwide, please utilize these invitations. So I, I can be the mediator too, <laughs> also to mention to uh, 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 Professor, uh, Professor uh, Nizam. Before we continue our program, we would like to take a pictures first together because we won't miss Professor uh, Nizam with his plankon. We call it the head is plankon. It's very traditional way and from batik. <laughs> Mari silakan Mbak uh, 
kita foto bersama. Please open all your slides. Yes, please. Dia in United States. Are you up? Are you wake up? <laughs> okay. Yes, but I'm not video ready, Sita. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sudah. One more. One more. Okay, it's done. Hi, okay. Bye. Thank you very much, Pak Nizam. And then you, you may Mahita. stay here. I have to leave. I'm sorry. Okay, yes. I know you are very busy, but uh, thank you very much that you still give okay, time everyone. to us. Stay healthy, yes. stay safe. Yes, thank you. Terima kasih. And I would like to invite Dr. Dwita Hadirahmi, our moderator for today. She is an architect and focusing her uh, subject on Saujana heritage. Okay, time is yours, Bu Dwita and all the panelists. Yeah, terima kasih, Bu uh, Sita. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, evening to all of you. I hope you are well and um, healthy. Yeah, uh, today we uh, will have a four presentation and then discussion. But before, uh, let me uh, give some uh, introduction. Yeah, uh, this third uh, international e-public forum. Uh, focus on the role of community on the culture and natural heritage conservations. Uh, it aims to explore the strategic uh, ways in preparing and conducting cultural and natural heritage conservation, yeah, especially mobilizing private sectors, academicians, uh, scholars, and engaging communities. And some lessons learned from several cases in different parts of the globe will be examined. Yeah, and then harness the potential of heritage to eradicate uh, extreme poverty for all. This is SDGs number one. Yeah, in supporting quality of and access to education for all, uh, SDGs number four, uh, in reducing inequalities and fostering inclusiveness and cultural diversity. This is SDGs number eight will also be elaborated yeah the final goals of the summer course is to promote the balancing creative economy and heritage south conservation strategies to foster sustainable development goals on Jogja world batik city yeah and then uh, we will uh, have uh, professor kyoko kangki uh, professor uriko herbi um, and then Mutia Musya Sarah and Professor Paikuni. So uh, we will um, have a four presentation. Uh, it's 20 minutes. And then after that, we will have a discussion. So the first uh, presenter uh, is Professor Dr. Kyoko Kangki. She is a professor in architecture, Department of Architecture and uh, Architectural Engineering, Graduate School of Engineering, Kyoto University, Kyoto, Japan. She especially working for rural and urban planning and participatory design and specialist for cultural landscape conservation with a local community. In Japan, Professor Kangi was academic member for World Heritage Nomination of Sacred sites and pilgrimage routes in key mountain range. This is the first cultural landscape uh, world heritage in Japan. And then also member for national designation of conservation area of key Uasa preservation area of historic buildings. Yeah, and then also member of uh, Hinenosho cultural landscape evolved from medieval village. And then uh, also terraced field and fishing village in Yusu Misugaura Ehime. 
Uh, she also participated in many conservation activities in uh, Kyoto by mainly collaborating with the local community in Nishijin, Katsurasaka housing area, Fukakusa, Fushimi, and so on. Yeah. And then since 2003, uh, Professor Kanki participated in Borobudur Field School. Yeah, at the time with me also. <laughs> And she really studied much about international field school. And after that, participating in Bali Field School by uh, BPPI, this uh, Indonesian Heritage Trust, uh, Jakarta by Rucak, as well as in Japan and uh, Germany with TU Dortmund. Yeah, yeah. today, uh, Professor Kanki will give a presentation on yeah, elementary schools in uh, as the community yeah, in Nishijin traditional textile industry area in uh, Japan. Okay, please, uh, time is yours, Kanki san. Thank yes. you very much for your beautiful introduction for me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Today, I am sitting in my room in my university, but uh, the background is uh, elementary school we focus today. Uh, it uh, looks like uh, the new elementary school, but uh, uh, there is a very important uh, traditional uh, relationship with uh, between the people and the school. So I like to uh, introduce uh, how is the, the community works and uh, how is the relation to the elementary school and uh, how is the, the relation with the traditional textile industry in Nishijin area in Kyoto. And the last time I made a, a presentation about the, the evolutive conservation of the cultural landscape about the Nishijin and the Batik in Jakarta. And today I will focusing on the community and the community system itself is a kind of the cultural heritage actually. Maybe in everywhere in the world we have such a cultural heritage. And uh, so it is quite interesting and important to have a uh, new things and to keep the tradition. So I like to introduce such a case in Nishijin area. I will share the, my PowerPoint first. Yes, this is my PowerPoint and I will make it uh, the full, full screen, full screen. Yes, yes, this is my starting. Oh, sorry, <laughs> back to the, yeah, this is full screen. Okay, I will start my presentation by my PowerPoint. And after this presentation, I will show the five minutes video uh, I edited with the president, uh, uh, the teachers of the elementary school. Um, but at the first time, I will uh, explanation. I will do the explanation about the, the background of this area. Uh, so today, I like to uh, introduce uh, kind of the maybe a kind of the special and also the typical in Kyoto and the relationship between community and the industry. And uh, this is a photograph taken by me, myself, from the airplane. <laughs> uh, uh, this is a, a larger space of Kyoto city. And uh, the city center is something like this in the northern part. And uh, the red dot line is uh, today's place, uh, part of the heart Nishijin area. And uh, you can see uh, there is a kind of the basin topography here. And the northern part is a city center and the historic city. And the southern part is a little bit rural, but uh, the modern modernized and something like uh, industry or traffic or uh, other kinds of the public works or so. So it, this is a larger space of Kyoto, but uh, the Kyoto is a kind of the compact city uh, with so many kinds of the industry from tradition to the, the contemporary. And uh, that is one of the, the special things in Kyoto, uh, for example, compared with Osaka. Osaka is more larger space and uh, so industrial and uh, the facing to the 
the sea and the, they have the, the, the seashore, so many industry area. But the, in Kyoto, every, everything must be coexist inside this area. So it is quite interesting things up to now, everywhere having a kind of linkages among the so many functions. So Nishiji is also in such a context, I think. So, okay. So today I like to explain the linkages among three things, community systems as cultural heritage. I will introduce from now and uh, I will make a special comment about what is the function of the elementary school here. And also the community members is also the traditional textile industry members here. So it can be described what kind of the collaboration have the traditional textile industry having the community through the elementary school. In such a context, I will explain a little bit more. Okay, at first, Kyoto is a long historic city, but uh, I will show the short explanation about the history of the Kyoto city. Uh, Kyoto became the capital city in 794 and uh, until 1867. And uh, after this, uh, 1867, capital went to Tokyo. So the citizens of Kyoto having a, such a perception, they used to be the capital city cultural center. And it is also very important background. And at the first time in 794, the first construction of the capital, and already we had the Greek street systems until now. It's a partly transformed, but until now we have a grid street system in the city. And uh, after for, uh, 1467 until 77, there used to be the big civil war inside Kyoto. This is very famous historic event. And uh, in that period, the big destruction was to take, uh, was, uh, realized inside the basin. So the Kyoto city structure was deconstructed after this civil war. And this is also the transform of the community. And uh, after this civil war, the development of the community system started until now, <laughs> no, no, maybe the origin of the contemporary community system started here. And after such a civil war, the, how, how to say, a merchant or the shop owners or traders or uh, craftsmen or specialists for the producing the, the commodities or something is a, became very powerful. So it means that after the civil war, the construction of the Kyoto city was by the powerful citizens, not only by the government. So that is the starting point of the community system until now. And uh, one more important event is modernization, the end of the samurai era. 1868, the next, next year of the, the capital transform to the Tokyo, modernization of Kyoto started. And under this modernization, so many things, so many projects was exquisite. For example, a uh, new infrastructure and or new uh, tra traffic traffic systems or new production or new industries. But uh, at the same time, uh, the community system must uh, have been 
transformed into the modernization system. And uh, with the modernization, the new school system came to the community. And that before the modernization, they had a kind of the school system, but the new one came. And uh, one thing is elementary school. But uh, in Kyoto, special thing was the, the construction and the establishment of the elementary school along to the modernization system was operated by the community themselves. The community members paid the money and uh, paid for the design and uh, to prepare the, the site and to establish the elementary school by themselves. So this is a special perception of the elementary school until now because already, uh, already in, uh, in this moment, the elementary school system is managed by the city government, but actually community having an idea, we have the elementary school, we established, we are supporting and our elementary school, such idea is still existing, very strong. So it is very interesting. This is a kind of the cultural heritage, I think. And, uh, but uh, uh, after 1970s, the, in the city centers, the population decreased because so many people likes to go a little bit outside from the city center to have their own better housings. So they had a very difficult uh, years in 1970s or 80s or 90s, and the decline of the members of uh, numbers of the children. So in 1990s, in several communities, they experienced of the consolidation of the elementary school, and the today's elementary school called the. Uh, Nishijin Chuo Elementary School is one of such uh, examples. And uh, later I will show a little, a little bit more details, but uh, this is a very short explanation about the history of Kyoto City uh, from the transformation of the community system. And uh, this map shows the contemporary basic community units in a uh, little bit the northern part of Kyoto city center, historic city. And you can see uh, this is very small unit uh, with the street systems. For example, here is a street and the community like this. And this type of the street system community is originated from the medieval time. And uh, this is a very small, uh, maybe the population or households might be, for example, 30 or 40 or so. And uh, in this moment, uh, by the national uh, statistical search, utilize this system until now in Kyoto. So this is very, very basic units, very traditional, and it is existing. And uh, after the modernization, the elementary school system started. And uh, this is the maps of such uh, the first situation of the modernization era. And the uh, left side district map is the elementary school district in the 1868. And uh, this district, is surviving until now in some cases. And uh, today I like to focusing on these four districts. So it means there used to be the four elementary schools. And but in 1990s, they had a consolidation. So now there is only one elementary school here. But community system itself is still according to the this district. So there is a full community actually in this moment. 
And so that is the kind of the transformation and historically uh, operated by the, uh, the changement of the population and uh, the changement of the, how to say, social changes, but uh, uh, still exist. And this, the right hand map is a school location in the first time. The, this is only, uh, this is one elementary school, second elementary school, third elementary school, fourth elementary school for the, this area. And uh, you can see so many dots here. Uh, these are the first elementary school established by the community. And uh, some, in, these here is more like a city center. And uh, in the city center, especially, such elementary school is now heritage building. Uh, in case of the building uh, constructed before 1930s or 40s, it is very precious modernized architecture now. So in the city center, some of them is utilized as a museum, a city museum, or some other public utilization at the same time. The recently, some such architecture was converted into the hotels. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but uh, but uh, actually the citizens love such uh, museums, a uh, public facility utilizing the such a uh, very important elementary school buildings. And this is the one of the such uh, heritage buildings of the Nishijin uh, elementary school. This is older one. This is before the consolidation. And uh, this is a, like, you, you can see this is a lot of modernized uh, buildings designed in 1930s. And uh, this is now empty because after the consolidation, this is not the elementary school site. Actually, officially, uh, the elementary school can utilize this one, but uh, usually the, the, there is no person here. And uh, so actually our laboratory is uh, collaborating with the Nishijin community to plan how to utilize this building, how to conserve, how to uh, change into something uh, related to the community. And uh, we are just uh, uh, having an idea in this moment and we must take a long process from now to, to collaborate with the city government, maybe, <laughs> but, uh, but still under discussion. And uh, this is uh, the elementary school system started with this kind of the uh, very special situation in Kyoto city center. But uh, after uh, 1970s or 80s, uh, it is, it must be consolidated. So at first we will check in the moment uh, the situation of the former elementary school communities in this moment. This is a little bit complicated slides, but uh, this is an explanation of the community system of the former elementary school. And uh, in every community system of the former elementary school, of course, they have the representative from every basic community units. For example, this is Nishijin, former elementary school. Here is the buildings we uh, now discussed. And uh, you can see small basic units here, many things according to the street bill. They have the representative from each basic unit. And uh, various groups, is also the member of the community system. And among the various groups, some is connected with the citywide association. And this table in Japanese, sorry, but this table is a very common uh, example of the citywide association. And uh, such a citywide association is also connected to the city government. 
And uh, so several groups is also uh, connected to this kind of the association from the community. And uh, the, their purpose of the activity is sometimes a public service, culture, safety, social welfare, friendship, many things. At the same time, the community system created their own original activity sometimes. In such case, uh, they have uh, some groups and uh, such a groups is also the member of the community. And uh, maybe I think all the number of the, the member of members of the community system is like uh, 30 or 50 persons, I think. And, uh, such, and uh, they can change by uh, the year who should be the representative or who should be the group leaders or who should be the activity leaders changeable inside the community. But uh, uh, boarding members should be uh, having uh, the weekly or monthly or yearly meetings. So uh, in such case, uh, in such opportunities, maybe 30 or 50 persons are gathered. And uh, actually, there is some system of the election of the chairperson of the community itself. And so it means that they have a kind of the governance by themselves. It is not a fixed thing. They, they discuss about the, such a rules and the systems. Uh, it, it is sometimes something like a very demo, um, it's a self-governance system. And uh, so it means that the, the city government must listen to the opinion of this kind of the community because all the Kyoto city area is covered by the, such a community system. So they must discuss. They cannot ignore, ignore actually. <laughs> so it is very powerful things in, up to now. And uh, maybe it is very good to make a kind of the balancing power of the inside the Kyoto city. How, how, how is the conservation or how is the distraction or how is the development is also very frequently on the discussion in such a, such a levels. So, so we can collaborate how to conserve such buildings of the Nishiji Elementary School heritage with the community and to think about the, the way to conservation and the discussion with the government. It is possible with the collaboration of the community system here. So this is very powerful and very uh, sustainable and, uh, and the functional system inside the Kyoto, especially in the historic area. So this is very important things. And then they made the consolidation of the four elementary school into one. You know, uh, I already show these four elementary school community into and uh, changed into one. The, now they have an issue into elementary school. So it means that there must be the new system collaborating with elementary school. So they set up the new school management council after the establishment of the new Nishijin Chuo Elementary School from 1997. This is quite interesting. So this is the entrance of the Nishijin Chuo Elementary School now. And the, and this is the one of the supporter of this presentation. And the, he, she is the principal. <laughs> And we visited here uh, May uh, 4th. And uh, there it is, it was a holiday, so there is no children, <laughs> but uh, this is entrance. And uh, this building was newly constructed at the consolidation, but the site is the same with the Toen Elementary School. And uh, this table is very important table today. This is the system, school management council of 
Nishijin Chuo Elementary School, New York. And uh, the, this is the uh, principal, and here is the school management council board. This is mainly by the community. And uh, there is a full former elementary school community, say it's Nishijin, Toen, and Julak. This is, uh, sorry, this, this four elementary school, four former elementary school communities. They participated here and uh, the sharing, the philosophy of the education of this elementary school, intellectual education, moral education, physical education. They are the making uh, the three philosophy shared with the community. And uh, there is also the parents representative. And the parents representative is also the member of the, these four former elementary school district. But the uh, parents is uh, rather younger people, actually. And so they have their own organization of the parents of the elementary school. So the people here is also the community member, but the gather, gathering as the parents. So, so the blue one is a community members and the green one is also the uh, community members. So we can see the member here, so many people is collaborating with elementary school. We can understand by this table. And uh, these are the community by this management council. There is one, two, three, four, five, six council, I'm uh, sorry, co committee. And uh, for example, this regional study committee is very directly related to the cultural heritage. And uh, but, uh, you know, you can see, so this type of the activity to com community teachers for integrated study, uh, uh, sorry, uh, regional study committee will help the community teachers for the integrated study program and uh, help the study on tradition and the culture in study program. That is uh, maybe one of our interest. And uh, there is several members from the community and the parents groups and, uh, and they collaborate with the school. So it means that uh, such a program is made by the community from the four former elementary school community system. And uh, the, these persons, these persons is at the same time the professionals of the Nishiji industry, mainly. So community is at the same time, the industry, cultural heritage sustainers. So it is almost the same. So it is quite interesting. This type of the system, the elementary school have, and that here, the members of the community and the school and the children can meet and collaborate. And uh, at the same time, the member is from the such a high quality traditional, traditional industry. So it is a meeting point systematically. So this is a very characteristic things in this elementary school. For example, this is the uh, evidence. <laughs> Later, I will show a short movie, but uh, this is uh, evidence of such a uh, meeting point. Uh, and uh, one more thing, here is the community teachers. Community teachers, they have a such a system. And uh, here we can see the community teachers, <laughs> actually, they will come to elementary school and uh, to have a class and uh, to have a seminars and uh, to have a tutoring. And, uh, and, uh, the, the, some, uh, they, that, that is the kind of the the experiencing the, the tradition. 
And uh, you can see the tea ceremony class, and uh, this is uh, the weaving machine experiences. And sometimes the, the community can provide the good qualified uh, the products from the industry. And uh, here I found the batik to here. And uh, I don't know who, <laughs> who give this one, but uh, actually they keep. And uh, at the same time, in the buildings of this new elementary school, there is one gen very beautiful Japanese style room with a very beautiful ceiling. And uh, this ceiling is sustained, uh, su su succeeded from the Toen elementary school, the older elementary school. You know, the wooden structure can be disorganized to put another site. So this is the kind of the partly conservation of the old buildings. And uh, uh, this is on the same one. Eh? And uh, in, in about the, the elementary school, uh, former elementary school, uh, we are now doing the kind of the conservational work and the, to make a kind of experiments. But uh, uh, this, Elementary school building itself is very important heritage for us. So finally, I like to show the industry side. This red one is the industry side history in short. Uh, in this civil war time, name of Nishijin started because Nishijin name is the Western base during the war. And after the war, uh, the Nishijin became the textile industrial area. And uh, but uh, at, during the first step of the modernization era, maybe a little bit of decline they had because uh, the changing the capitals and the changing the economy, so many things changed. But after that, the Nishijin industry also had the modernization and innovation and the introducing machinery and the programming and the imported technology also. And up to now, they had a kind of the quality and the having uh, the chance to having the economy. And, uh, but actually the, the Japanese types of the kimono or industry, textile industry is not, not a good situation actually. This is a little bit a decrying situation. Um, but uh, uh, still powerful, they have. And uh, so it means that the industry history is corresponding to the, the community history. The, I showed this diagram last time, and the Nishijin textile industry having so many types of the craftsmen, craftspersons. So it means that uh, the, every craftsperson is more like uh, uh, independent workshops and uh, so many types of the people are living inside. And uh, the situ situation of the town itself is uh, uh, maybe the kind of the reflection from such uh, system. Uh, this is a uh, photo from 1960s. You can see the so many small and traditional houses inside. And this is Nishijin Elementary School. This is a Toen Elementary School at that time. And the other things is almost all the woodland, wood houses is a little bit small and having a workshop inside. And so many people live here. And it is 1980s and this is now. Maybe a little bit changed and the, the deconstructed, having a little bit vacant sites and so many uh, other types of the shops and uh, so maybe some just houses or something. And so utilization of the building is changed and changed, changed, but the scale is small until now. And uh, there is a and one, of, one more of the findings here is uh, not just uh, the craftspersons of the Nishijin textile or the shop owners or factory owners, also the workers, also the shops, and also the many kinds of the daily, uh, daily lives is also existing here. So many people here and 
So recently, and the people who have a good education or who likes to have an environment here is likes to come to here to have a house. So the Nishijin is also the area for the housing. So there is so many types of the people inside and the children is from the very uh, diverse background of the family. So the elementary school can provide a new idea or the share the tradition with a, such a family and the children that is very good node inside this uh, contemporary Nishijin too. So at the, same, at the same time in the Kyoto area, there is so many types of the uh, culture and the many culture, Japanese culture is related to the wearing the kimono. So the Nishijin should know the many types of the culture. So I think uh, maybe we must understand the Nishijin area cultural landscape by the, at first, street structure and the community system and, all, and industry system at the same time. So the community system itself is a cultural heritage and the industry system is also cultural heritage. And the physical structure of the street and the house sites is also the cultural heritage. So this is a layer system and we are now evoluting. Uh, at the, the opportunity of the consolidation and at the time of the decline of the Japanese art, or the, uh, maybe at the time of the over tourism or something, so many programs we think we have, but uh, we have so many layer systems and the community itself is uh, one of the layer. Okay, so I'd like to emphasize the community itself is a heritage and the industry also the heritage, and this is a corresponding or connected. So which one is the priority? I don't know, but the maybe sometimes the community is a priority and uh, sometimes industry priority. So it is uh, not almost uh, the, the integrated system. And uh, here, the elementary school is the node for such a corresponding. So it is maybe the example in the Nishiji area. So I think it might be a sustain, sustainable, very strong way, I think, because the, they know this importance actually. So under such a perception was sustained by the elementary school. So I like to five minutes videos from now, it's okay? Yeah, please. Yes. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will show the five minutes video. Oh, one go. Sorry. <laughs> Just wait. Eh, to, kore. Hmm. Boss, what is that? Eh, to, just wait. Eh. Could it be done? Oh, get up. Okay, I will start. Okay, uh, I went to the school in holiday because this is emergency situation of the COVID-19. And this is the same table I explained about the council. The, the, he is the Mr. Yamaguchi. Uh, he used to be the supporter of the elementary school activities. And uh, this is also the system of the school management council they have such uh, supporters. And uh, they, it is now uh, explaining the system of the school management council to us. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, let us visit the uh, Japanese style room. This is inside the elementary school. And uh, this space is for the experiencing and uh, studying the traditional culture as a classroom. Large tatami room for many activities. And the, the ceiling is the succeeded from the old Toen elementary school building. Very beautiful. And the, sorry, the elementary school children's activities, we cannot get contact directly in this moment. <laughs> so this is only the photograph, but this is a weaving. And the, they have a kind of experience. And uh, you can see the adult people here. This is a uh, music. And uh, these are the community teachers. And uh, these they are the very, very professionals about the cultural heritage, actually, from Nishiji. Now, this is wearing the kimono, especially for the summertime in Yukata. And uh, this is a kimboko. It is uh, the festival. Uh, festival culture. The he is the carpet. Sorry, he is a carpenter. I know very well, and he is a master carpenter. And this is also the tea ceremony. But the tea ceremony is more like a philosophy studying. So the this is also the community teacher. The many teacher came and to tutoring the directory and. The, the traditional shop of the, the sweets also cooperated. And uh, this is also the kind of the landscaping of the, the, the surroundings. And the, finally, the children invite the guests for their tea. And this is uh, also by the community teacher. And uh, this is a flower arrangement, a uh, rather modernized person, way and uh, this is also the, the supported by the community teachers he she, she, he is really the flower shopkeepers and uh, they are the really high quality professionals and uh, they had a kind of the design by themselves and making the vessels and having the decoration themselves and uh, the exhibition by themselves this is uh, the the shop shop of the flowers the, <laughs> the community teachers came from here. And uh, the, such a situation they had every year for a long time. And uh, finally, lastly, this is one of the, the popular uh, narrow street by the elementary school children by the special uh, program of the, the, and the, the work, work, working in the, the school district. And uh, you can see the, this type of the old uh, uh, historic uh, corner is a uh, kind of the heritage of the buildings and uh, the architecture. But uh, for the children, they found so many places to play with. And uh, here, here is the, the narrow street and the, but the, the in front of the houses, they have so many things that as an ornament or, and the, such a thing is uh, the children's findings. And, uh, and it is very welcomed by the habitats to uh, the children is a noisy brain here. It is quite a good relationship with the, the inhabitants and the children. And this is also a very popular old historical sites, but uh, uh, this is also the atmosphere in the Nishiji, but uh, this is not just outlook. We have so many community teachers from the Nishiji industry to go to elementary school, basically on the, the former elementary school community system. And so the note of the elementary school is very important. So I like to uh, ask everybody to understand <laughs> the community is the, the maybe first priority here. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kangki. It's very, very interesting uh, presentation. And uh, what uh, Professor Kangki's uh, presentation show us uh, the example of community system, elementary school, and textile industry is a unite. Yeah, yeah cannot yeah. be separated. Yeah, forming a system. And this system is a cultural heritage of the Nishijin area that is yeah, conserved well and uh, sustainable. Thank you so much, uh, Kangkisan. And then, uh, yeah, I uh, call the second presenter, Professor Ulrike Herpich. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ul Ul Ulrike atau Uli. She studied geodesy and is now working as senior scientist at the Vienna University of Technology at the Faculty of Architecture and Spatial Planning. She is responsible for research funding and international affairs. Her research interests focus on interdisciplinary research approaches of built cultural heritage. Uh, Ulrike is a member of the Scientific Committee SIPA Heritage Documentation and Vice President of ICOMOS Austria. She has been involved in research projects in Indonesia since uh, 2003. Okay, and then uh, uh, today, uh, Prof. Uh, Ulrik uh, will give a presentation on the uh, integrated approaches to, to uh, include community in the conservation of cultural heritage. Okay, please, uh, Uli, your time is 30 minutes from now. Please. Okay, thank you. Terima kasih, Udvita. Yes, so uh, hello again. <laughs> Uh, it's a pleasure for me being here, and I will share my screen. I just try to to do it now. So, yeah. I hope you can see the presentation more. This is correct. Yeah, it's clear. Okay. okay. So yeah, <clears throat> today I want to show you some approaches to include communities in the conservation of cultural heritage um, done by um, both uh, sites that I'm working for, the National Committee of Ecomos in Austria and also at the Vienna University of Technology. So just a short content, what I will show you is what we do in Ecomos Austria how we try to include communities in the conservation of cultural heritage in research. Then I will show you a little bit what our approach is in education, especially in collaboration with Indonesian universities and give some concluding remarks. So as the National uh, Committee of e-commerce in Austria, we try to focus on preventive monitoring and I will go in detail what this is about include communities and people in the attribute mapping of the outstanding universal values of world heritage sites. And we are cooperating in development of world heritage management plans, which is a very important uh, part, especially in the moment as we do have some uh, problems in Vienna, but I will come to this later on. In Austria, we have 10 World Heritage Sites. Uh, three of them on the upper level are uh, cultural landscapes. And uh, even this is the Semmering Railway is um, enlisted as a technical monument, but still the surrounding landscape is so valuable that this is more likely um, also worked on as a cultural landscape site than just a technical monument. Then we do have three historic city centers. Uh, we have the Palace and Gardens of Schönbrunn and two sites which are um, serial nominations with the ancient and primeval beach forests of the Carpathians and other regions in Europe. It's a natural heritage site and the prehistoric pile dwellings around the Alps. 
So very different world heritage sites. And we see uh, as one of the missions of um, e-commerce Austria as the national committee that we have to work in this frame as the advisory body for the UNESCO, but also advisory body for those who are living in or around or close to World Heritage Sites. So one of our missions or the main important mission is uh, the monitoring of the state of the conservation of the cultural properties. And we try to do here a preventive monitoring to uh, include the communities in um, conserving the, um, the outstanding universal values as it uh, is stated in the nomination files for the enlisting of the World Heritage Sites and also to raise awareness about the importance of these values also for the communities themselves. So what do we do, for example, in um, the World Heritage Site Fiatö Neusiedlersee? I always stress this one first because this is the site I'm uh, in charge for the monitoring. So because we conduct uh, a group monitoring of the site. So as uh, for, for each of the sites, uh, a group of members of Ecomos Austria is in charge to do and to conduct this monitoring and to work on the preventive monitoring. So because one of, for example, here, the outstanding universal value attributes for the uh, World Heritage Sites of Fiatu Neusiedlersee is the compactness and the still ongoing tradition of the villages and settlements around the Lake Neusiedlersee. So this is what the Rust looks like. It is one of the things that are also even mentioned in the nomination file for the enlisting of this World Heritage Site. And this is what we see also from another perspective where we already experience that this compactness of the settlement is already, yeah, not destroyed, don't say it like this, but uh, it is really, uh, there is a huge impact of new developments around uh, the, um, oh, this town that are already harming the idea of what was mentioned in the nomination files. So even if there is an advisory body or a council that is sitting together, if um, objects like this is a retirement home have to be planned close or in a settlement around the Lake Neusiedlersee, this uh, group of people have to be consulted. Uh, these are representatives of the federal state of um, Burgenland, where the World Heritage Site of Fiatu Neusiedlersee is located, but there are also specialists in natural heritage, cultural heritage, architects, planners, um, water specialists involved in this advisory body, but sometimes the mayors kind of forget to mention that a, um, a development like this uh, one here has to be uh, conducted and as we don't really have any legal, or we didn't have, now we, uh, now we already have a legal um, tool to uh, also do some, um, yes, some matters to tell the mayors that they don't have to do something like this without uh, consulting if it is World Heritage, um, according to the World Heritage um nominations uh, or not so we try now to because this is uh, already 20 years or not not 20 years uh, 10 years old and there was not so much inclusion of the communities before now we try to include the mayors uh, of the of the settlements around the lake Neusiedlersee in discussion uh, and uh, talking about what are the values, what are the attributes that make this World Heritage Site so special, what about this has to be conserved so that um, they understand if they are do um, or conduct any planning or construction in their settlements, 
that they really have to take care about these outstanding universal value attributes. But for this, of course, you have to know what the attributes are, and I will talk about this a little later. We uh, are including also um, quite a lot of students always in these measures. We bring together students from our universities with the youngsters who are living in these sites to know about what is important for them and if any development has to be conducted of how to create a new environment that is according to the nomination file that states the outstanding universal value of uh, this World Heritage Site. So this is working very good because very often we get then information of the community members about um, best practice examples. Uh, for example, this site, which is a wine information and community center in um, the town of uh, Neusiedl am See. So it's uh, on the northern part uh, of this World Heritage Site. And here we see how new uh, architecture can be in, uh, introduced into the traditional one uh, without uh, making any harm to it, showing that uh, development has to go on. Development is continuing, so you can't stop just because uh, the, this is a World Heritage Site, but how to conduct it in a way that it is in the same pace as this uh, World Heritage Site developed for the last 2000 years, that is the important thing. So because then these attributes of the outstanding universal value or the values of the cultural heritage uh, can stay alive uh, without making um, this thing stop or change so that you will still feel what is there on cultural heritage and continue it also for the future. I stressed already the attribute mapping a little bit, and I will uh, show how we conduct this attribute mapping in collaboration with community members and mayors in the World Heritage Site of Bachau. So this is not the most typical image of Bachau because you will always have the River Danube. But here you have the very um, nice and important attributes of the vineyards on the hills, uh, very old railway track, these um, dry stone walls, which are very important for this World Heritage Site. And again, this compactness of the settlements. And as a, a part of a um, management plan that has been developed there for the last three years, there is uh, to be um, put together a guideline for the construction and planning within the World Heritage Site of Wachau. And here, as the advisory body in, in uh, collaboration with representatives from Ecomos Germany, we did this attribute mapping asking students, uh, mayors, and interested community members what they think are the most important attributes of this uh, name, outstanding universal value parts in the nomination file. So I use here the examples of the World Heritage. As of course, we, we as ECOMOS members are in charge for the monitoring here. But this can be conducted uh, also at other cultural heritage um, regions, cultural uh, landscapes, or also heritage urban landscapes, which is very important as you also know about this uh, historic urban landscape approach, including not only one part, the restoration of building or the conservation of building or the monuments, but as it as a whole. So here with the attributes, we won't have not only what are the major attributes in the cities like uh, one or the other building or a place or these dry stone walls as I mentioned already but also how is it related to the wine culture in the culture of what uh, Renate showed two weeks ago about these um, traditional clothing customs dances singing and all these kind of things so this has to be worked on together so that's why we are including here the communities. Um, 
what is also very important, as I already mentioned, uh, to be involved in the development of uh, site management plans. So we have here the example of the World Heritage Site of Vienna, and this is just a rendering of an ongoing development of this hotel building where the community um, already raised um, concerns that this is harming the outstanding universal value of the uh, historic center of Vienna, uh, because of course you can always discuss the, what is the outstanding universal value, but here in the nomination file, the view, the axis from here is especially mentioned. So this is something we really have to take care about. And there, as we are working together with these interest groups in the city of Vienna, they already raised awareness when the, um, the discussion on the construction of this hotel was starting. So that's why we do have this whole process on being red listed uh, and also of how to work now on a sustainable um, um, site management plan. So this kind of <clears throat> um, developments won't uh, repeat themselves. So we see here Renate Bornberg, as uh, she was there for uh, two, two weeks ago, um, just this week was in, um, involved in a discussion with representatives of the authorities of Vienna, also including the interest groups of different districts of Vienna in how to include the communities from the beginning in these kind of developments, which is really important and also here the people are so sensitive in the moment and aware that um, things like these developments could be prevented from the beginning. So this is the part that we are conducting as uh, representatives of Ecomos Austria. Here I want to go now into some approaches in research uh, where we see how to work together with communities or representatives of communities, the public, and, and how to raise awareness. So some examples of our research studies in the um, last 20 years, I would say. So one of the projects we have conducted is the recording and documentation of historic buildings in Albalas, the, the historic city center of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia where um, the idea was to introduce students of the King Abdul Aziz University to the techniques of the um, measuring and then research of traditional buildings. The interesting part was that these 54 students who have been um, working in this frame never went to the historic center of Jeddah because it was uh, the story that it is a very poor, filthy, and dangerous place. So they didn't dare to go there. But when we were working with them in the streets, uh, sitting with them in the coffee houses underneath the trees and walking with them to this, uh, through the streets, they appreciated that and got a completely new approach to this old city center because as they never been there, they, they could not experience how it is. And the interesting part was that they really appreciated that, took it back to their families, were talking with their families, uh, brought them to the historic city center, enjoyed with their families who also partly never been there. Also these, um, these um, very enjoyable environment of a um, historic Arabian city. And a very nice uh, side effect then was, or I would say also success, was that this very nice building, the Nurwali House, owned by the family of uh, Muhammad here. They um, really neglected the building, as you can see, but he was so much um, um, enthusiastic about the approach that we have done there that at the end of our work, he brought his family. So there were 20 family representatives walking uh, through the house again, because, and they said they, they didn't want to go there because it has no air condition, it has no elevator, it's a six story house. So it's very, um, yeah, <laughs> it was I'm not so nice to go there actually, or it was not so nice, but when they've been there, 
the elder family members uh, talked to the younger ones, telling them about how they had festivals in the house and what corners are the special ones and uh, different things of the family that uh, the younger ones never heard about before. And as uh, this guy now was, is telling us every now and then, that they restored um, the most part of the building and still use it as a weekend retreat for family members. And they're also in, um, inviting a lot of people from the community and also other friends um, and neighbors to this building, to a part where the young, modern, or um, now very new citizens of Albalat would, uh, not Albalat, of Jeddah would never go. So. This is how you would perhaps introduce uh, the values of the cultural heritage uh, indirectly to the community, raising the awareness and so that they would uh, start to um, conserve their cultural heritage on their own. A similar experience we have had in um, recording and document uh, documenting the um, architectural heritage, the traditional uh, um, architecture of Samoa and Fiji Islands. That was back then in 2001. But just because I recently heard about one of the uh, youngsters we worked with them at the time, I wanted to include this example. So here we just, uh, we just started to work with social and cultural anthropologists because before we went there, they already told us that the uh, society and how people are um, working together and living together is very different from Europe. So we, were, we have been prepared and did then all the introduction ceremonies and were really very much included into, um, into the community. And the very interesting part here was that the young um, people had to translate when elder ones were talking about how the architecture or parts in the architecture are part of the heritage and what the meaning and symbolism is behind that. As most of the youngsters uh, are educated in uh, US or in Australia, they hadn't had the time to hear about these stories and the background. And so they got involved and um, interested in what happens around there because on their own, they wouldn't ask about it because it is there. So why bother about it? It is still there. And yeah, the elder ones do the rituals, but it is nothing so fancy if you are living on a campus somewhere in California, of course. But with this interest that we had in asking the questions to the elder people, also the youngsters started to understand and to appreciate what the values of their yeah, cultural I'm heritage is. I'm and I heard uh, about this um, fellow, uh, guy fellow, here fellow, who started um, a community a group who are still preserving the traditional buildings and also rituals and dances and tattoos, which are very important there uh, also on the long run. And he said that he was inspired by the work that we have done there. So that's why we are already oh, still in, uh, in contact. Another um, example that I wanted to show is this uh, transnational ecological networks. I already stressed this two weeks ago where we conducted a lot of interviews with people um, in Austria and in Hungary. So um, two sides of a border that has been divided by the Iron Curtain. So really, uh, a fence between two countries for 40 years. And this of course changed the cultural landscape quite a lot. But now with this opening again, uh, a lot of people were thinking about what the meaning was and, and uh, what it is that is important for them. And also this symbol that is now the green belt because the, on this iron curtain, on this wall between the two countries, um, different kind of ecosystems um, developed. And this is now a very important and integrative part of this cultural landscape that people are appreciating and also try to uh, conserve on both sides of the border. They also appreciate that uh, for this time of these 40 uh, years of division, 
still on both sides of the borders, people like this gentleman here, Seb Kwas, um, tried to, to uh, collaborate still, and they did a lot of um, work on uh, preserving the, the stories, the language of this, uh, this countryside and uh, dances and, and a lot of songs. So the language here, I must say, for a German-speaking person, it's it's non-understandable. It's supposed to be German, but it is something you you won't understand as another German-speaking person. But it is a part of the cultural heritage and a very important one. And there are a lot of people uh, still interested in that. And with this project, we also documented a lot of it, and so it is con uh, conserved on the long run. And people are still working on that in the community center that I showed before in Neusiedl am See to collect these uh, dances, uh, singing and um, other things. Oh, sorry, I forgot to turn off my telephone. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, and uh, another, and I think already the last example in this frame is uh, a project that we started last year on the uh, restoration, preservation of this castle, um, 40 kilometers west of, uh, of Vienna, where we started with the recording and documentation, again, the measurement of the building itself, but uh, we got involved, which is very important with the community there, and asked the Hello, Uli. Uli, hello. Uh, the, I think hello. internet it's, uh, of Uli. Yes. Yes, wait a minute. <laughs> You're still in mute, Uli. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. my internet connection at this time in the morning is always a little lousy, but I try. Um, I don't know uh, how far you heard it, but I think it is, I just mentioned that we always include the communities in when we try to develop a building like this of what they would need uh, as a regional development boost. And what we are working on here is to develop um, a competent center on sustainable uh, conservation of cultural heritage and restoration techniques, especially for this building, which would be a very good point for the next part that I want to show. Uh, this is something that we had the pleasure of working on since 2018, I think now. Um, and Excuse me, Uli. Building program. Excuse me, Uli. Maybe you have to re re reshare oh. your yeah sorry i for, uh, forgot about that oops uh, i think you see it again yes is this right okay yes, oh, sorry. Yes, yes. So i think the castle i already showed and then i just wanted to say so that this work there so this uh sustainable uh restoration practice center hopefully too would work very good together with our capacity building program that we are working on with five universities in indonesia and um, three or four university in europe that i don't show in the moment because I, we are still working on that and the idea is to uh, develop curricula that are uh, interdisciplinary and are also very matching to this Campus Merdeka idea Pagnissam was talking about in the, uh, in the opening remark. Here, um, we, um, we didn't succeed in the first run for the application, but uh, one outcome was this transcontinental interdisciplinary joint course we conducted in winter semester this year. Some outcomes have been 
from the students working on, again, community-driven and community-based work on how to live in, um, in communities together with the idea of um, using and facilitating the cultural heritage as a part or the base for sustainable tourism or how to uh, raise awareness of cultural heritage uh, in other parts of the world. So connecting here Kota Gede and Vienna in showing what are the values of the cultural heritage in uh, the respective other part uh, of the world. So as we see, it is working, we can work together here. We have, especially here in Indonesia, you have this idea of the Campus Merdeka. I think this is a very important base to work together in interdisciplinary education. So to have different curricula working on different levels, scaling levels, so on objects, on cities, on the cultural landscape, uh, but also including the, the, uh, the art, uh, the intangible heritage, and how to include also the community. So this is a very important part because the people are those who are living there and who are the kind of first responders for the conservation of the cultural heritage. And without their understanding, there won't be any conservation on the long run. So... Uh, we try to conduct uh, this uh, education in conservation in theory and practice for cultural heritage in this um, framework of uh, different modules. And as we can now exchange online education and uh, sending students back and forth from Indonesia to uh, Europe uh, and, and back, so uh, I th and students and also staff, it can be really conducted. So with, on the base also of Campus Merdeka, this kind of education framework can be really implemented, which is very good. And then focus also in working and facilitating and fostering the sustainable development goals. So all this is a package that we have to work on. As I also said last time, it is still a long way to go. But if we concentrate on this interdisciplinary work as researchers, as educators, working in interdisciplinary teams, uh, understanding the different sites, then we can go also in this transdisciplinary um, way to go and uh, involve in a strong way the communities. As I said, it is important to involve the communities as the people the people in the communities living in with next to the cultural heritage are those who are the first responsible for its conservation. If, and if they are convinced, then we hopefully have nice cultural landscapes, again, like in Kulombrogo, <laughs> always get homesick when I see these uh, images. Um, but um, I hope if we can succeed as uh, educators as researchers in always thinking about how to include the communities in also the sustainable conservation of cultural heritage. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Uli. This, your slide is very beautiful and serene <laughs> ambience. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is a very interesting uh, presentation uh, from Uli. What I can uh, highlight is the importance of the involvement of all parties, yeah, uh, government, uh, private agencies, universities, and especially the community, yeah, to get the same understanding, concern, and awareness on the cultural heritage and the need for conservation, yeah. Uh, so all efforts in a heritage conservation should involve the role of the community. Yeah, I, I think like that. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I call uh, the third presenter, uh, Mutia Muya Sarah S.R.S. 
Oh, where are you? Yeah, okay. She is the representative of 23 uh, master's students uh, in architecture, Department of Architecture and Planning, uh, Gajah Mada, uh, Universitas Gajah Mada. And uh, she will uh, present um, she and uh, uh, her friends uh, uh, result of the uh, studio assignments yeah? uh, in corridor transformation. This is uh, in uh, Malioboro based on historic urban landscape. Okay, Mutia. Yeah, please, uh, your time is 30 minutes. Please, okay. time is yours. Okay. Um, one. Okay. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, the Honorable uh, Professor Dr. Kiyoko Kanki, Dr. Ulri, uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Baikuni, uh, Dr. Insinyur Laretna, and then Dr. Insinyur Dwita. And I see my old lecture in, uh, from Un uh, Islamic University of Indonesia, Pauot. Good morning. Good, uh, and the other uh, participant, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. My name is Mutia Miyasara. Thank you for your. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, special occasion uh, for me. It's such an honor for me to able to represent uh, Master of Architecture uh, student 2021 to present our uh, assignment in history, theory, and conservation studio from April fifth, uh, in from April fifth to. Oh, wait. From April 5th to uh, April 28th. And uh, if you want to see our uh, assignment, please scan here. And then, oops. This is uh this is our uh, profile and uh, our lectures. Uh, Busita, Paika, Budita, and Bu Buida. Uh, actually, we divided into four groups, which are res responsible for different segments. And then here we come. Uh, Yogyakarta City. Uh, uh, in Yogyakarta City, we have Tugu, uh, Tugu Translation, Bring Harjo Market, uh, Gudung Agung, Fort Fredeberg, uh, Northern and Southern Plaza, uh, Plaza, and then Kraton, Yogyakarta. Uh, these are the evidence of uh, Yogyakarta historical. And then most of them stretch along Yogyakarta City Main Street, Margo Utomo, and Malioboro. Since the beginning of the construction of Yogyakarta as the capital of uh, Yogyakarta Sultan by Prince Mangkubumi, the factor of uh, Dutch colonial interference in the royal government, uh, the multicultural factors uh, with the existence of Chinese settlement, and then the development of railroad uh, transportation route to the industrial uh, revolution that occurred in Java and then Indonesia independence continue until now influencing object on the main street here and then uh, become the richer uh, into the value the, of their superiority. The long development of uh, the journey that has been passed uh, show the richness of the superiority, uh, superior uh, value this region has. And then as the very informative uh, presentation last week by Dr. Uri uh, from the globalization, people go into the same direction uh, to face the architecture. The necessity to finding the old uh, identity, identity again and also mirroring the history and also the culture uh, need to be considered to the development. This can be identified using a historic urban landscape approach. And then 
Here, I want to refresh our mind about historic urban landscape according to UNESCO General Conference 2011, which is an approach that provides to the key to understanding uh, historic urban landscape, uh, uh, historic urban environment, and then uh, including all those things such as uh, urban heritage conservation and the other things I mentioned here. And then uh, from, from uh, to more understand about uh, historic urban landscape, we actually read four books, uh, one per group, uh, about uh, reconnecting the city, the historic urban landscape, reshaping urban conservation, and then heritage memory and the politic of identity. Uh, from that, from all of that books, uh, we got uh, more knowledge about uh, the urgency and the method from each uh, historic urban uh, landscape tools. And then the first one is uh, community engagement. The urgency are the loss of identity, perception change of the value, uh, intangible territory, and then climate change. Uh, and this climate change is not about uh, natural phenomena or cycle, but about social, uh, political, economic, and cultural climate. And then the second is uh, knowledge and planning. Uh, knowledge and planning has the urgency, uh, there are conservation, engineering practice, uh, digital information, massive urbanization process, uh, human settlement, digital information recording system, uh, climate change, demolition, and relocation. And then the third is a uh, regulation system. Regulation system uh, for the urgency, there are new policy framework, a management of strategy, a regulation and bureaucracy, support and cooperation. And then the fourth uh, is financial approach. The urgency uh, is uh, financial planning. And then this is our research scheme. Uh, this study uh, aims to analyze and the, the dynamic value of tangible and intangible elements that form the in Tugu uh, to zero kilometers area. So uh, this is uh, our research scheme, start from MAPS identification that we got from uh, Jogja Heritage Society. Uh, actually, there are from 70, 55th uh, to 2020. And then from there, we more, uh, collect more data uh, with uh, literature and observation. And then most of uh, literature we collect from uh, Delper, Delper and then uh, digital no, collection Leiden University. And then the article and some of the paper uh, in Dutch. So we need to translate it. Uh, and then for the identification, we use historic urban landscape approach. Uh, and then we, for the analyze, we divide it into qualitative and quantitative. Uh, qualitative become narration, and then quantitative become landscape from and change map reconstruction. And then here is uh, uh, the result. Yes. So we choose uh, four main maps, uh, 1833, uh, 1925, uh, 1941, and then 2020. That has a lot of detail uh, beside the other maps, but we also layering another year for more specific uh, identification. And then we divide it uh, into four segments, starting from Tugu, Gowongan Kidul, uh, Tugu to Gowongan Kidul here as the segment one, and then uh, Gowongan Kidul to Sosrowijayan as, as, as segment two, and then Sosrowijayan uh, to Suryat Majan as the segment three, and then uh, Suryat Majan to zero kilometer as the segment four. Okay. Uh, Yogyakarta was established as a Sultanan Yogyakarta Yogyakarta Hadiningrat in 1755. Along with the beginning of Yogyakarta, Golong Gilik, uh, Kepatihan, Bring Harjo Market as an open air market, and then Fort Frederick, uh, Margo Utomo, and Malioboro World Bird. 
uh, to ease the understanding of this research, we will explain by years. And then here we have the map from uh, 1833. As you can see, uh, the construction identified in Malioboro and Margo Mulio. And then uh, Margo Utomo here uh, was undocumentary. And we also presume that as uh, empty loads. And then uh, Margo Utomo, uh, actually uh, the original is Margo Utomo, become to Guwek, Wek means uh, root in Dutch, when Dutch colonial uh, occupation. And then here we have, uh, according to social uh, cultural assets, uh, in 1897, the daily Java Bode to the daily Java Bode uh, Koran, the it tells uh, about uh, Tuguwek was very strict, and then from another. Uh, article we, le we learned that uh, Malioboro as a Raja Marga of the Royal Road. Here is Malioboro as a Raja Marga of Royal Road. It's function at a ceremonial uh, highways, especially on the day uh, on the day celebration. And then the all the streets uh, are the silent witness to the procession of the arrival, the arrival of the governor and the other uh, European official, both civilians as well as uh, military and other royal guests. And then, according to Kerry, nineteen forty-four. 1984, sorry, the ceremonial entry of the governor passing Malioboro fulfilled two important purposes. Uh, first one is to pay respect uh, as a guest deserve honor. And then the second is to tempt his greatness power. And here we have, according to tangible and intangible qualities aspect, there was a Golongi Lake here, a Golongi Lake a location in here. Oh, oops, sorry, uh, the, on the up here. And then uh, Golongilik was uh, built by Sultan in 1755 as a symbol of unity of the people in Yogyakarta against Dutch colonialism. And then in the 1867, there was uh, an earthquake uh, that destroyed Golongilik. And then in the 18... 1889, uh, Dutch government helped uh, to renovate it and becomes uh, the Witepal. The Witepal means uh, Tugu White or Tugu Putih, White Tugu or Tugu Putih. And then here we have uh, Fort Frederick here. Fort Frederick was established in uh, 1756 by Sultan with the with VOC agreement as a surveillance uh, post for potential uh, uprising inside Karaton environment and had a simple structure. Then uh, it renovated in 1787 to concrete structure. And from the map here, we also know there are there is an open air market. Open air market was originally uh, a Banyan uh, forest uh, after the establishment of Kraton in 1758. The, the area began to use for the transaction by residents of Yogyakarta and the surrounding area, uh, formed by a cluster of steel. Uh, mm -hmm. And batik was also yeah, sold there. Uh, you can see here, uh, batik are also sold there, and the other things uh, sold in here to to fulfill uh, to fulfill pe uh, people Jogjakarta need, uh, needs. And then uh, here we have another uh, tangible and built environment. Uh, there are resident house. Kepatihan Headquarter, Society the Ferenijing. Uh, residency House is a mansion, an office for Dutch residents, uh, built in 1830. 
And then Society de Ferenijing is a ballroom for European civilians. And then uh, Kepatihan Headquarter is a complex uh, of uh, office and a family home of Kepatih Dalem, who was a officer, uh, officer working as a bridge between Sultan and the colonial government. Sorry from the noise background, it's a heavy rain here. Next, uh, here we have a timeline uh, from uh, timeline from Tuguek to Margo Otomo Street. Uh, at the first in 1833, by Dutch colonial uh, named Tuguek because of the Tugu here. And then it was the longest uh, road in India. And then from the regulation system, uh, we know that this road is, is an important artery that connects the center of government, economy, worship, a public space, and other activities. And then uh, during here, we skip until uh, uh, or during the old, old order and the new older era. Uh, it was replaced uh, by the name Prince Makubumi Street. I think here and here. And then uh, here in uh, older, old order and then the new order era. And then in 2013, it was returned uh, to Margo Utomo. And then here we have uh, maps from 1925, as you can see here and on the maps, uh, according to environmental factors, buildings start to spread along the route here. Uh, this way of life ranging from the events of the removal culture cell cell in 1870s, and it gave uh, open change for private company. And then uh, the construction of of Hotel Tugu, Hotel Tugu here, and then uh, the most influence, uh, the most influence uh, was the construction of uh, Tugu train station here, uh, and then the centralization occurred in 1903, become a peak point, uh, became a peak point of uh, urban planning in Hindia Belanda. In here we have Tugu Station, was built uh, by Dutch government, Stadtspur Regen, uh, in 1887. Uh, the initial of the transition was operated to transport the corpse. And then in 1905 uh, was opened to passengers. And then uh, here we have uh, from the community engagement that this train station was a welcoming uh, procession of royal guests. Here we have uh, the picture from 1937 that the government uh, general welcomed by Sultan into the train station. And then uh, because of the two good train station, uh, another hotel built here. Uh, because of the in the in the beginning of 20th century, the journey from uh, Batavia to Surabaya took one half days by train, and train passenger often took an overnight in Yogyakarta city. Because of that, uh, Yogyakarta is also known as a transit city. And then by the 19,000, there are a few hotels established uh, around to good train station. Uh, and then we're now the the hotel is well known for their class service as they often used to accommodate a uh, Kraton royal guests. And then uh, here we have a uh, the transformation of uh, Pasar, that the one is open air market, into Bring Harjo Market. It was uh, redesigned by Dutch company in 1925 uh, with a concrete uh, structure and adopted Art Deco style. And then here we have uh, the shop houses in Malioboro. 
Uh, the first one is uh, forest and then turn into shop houses, function in 1833. And then in 1870, small store uh, be began to open and followed by European uh, permanent shop houses when two good translation was built. And then uh, soon from soon from uh, so soon from 1920 to 1930, after the street lights are available, uh, Malioboro becomes uh, famous for pedestrian walking activity and was call, called Malioboren in Dutch. And then uh, because of the tourism boom here, uh, Malioboro become the Broadway Van Jogja. And in the diversity aspect, we can show from the community engagement that the street was very, very multicultural, uh, very multicultural, because uh, shop how shop owners were from different countries such as uh, European, Chinese, Japanese, Indian, and uh, local. And then. Uh, the multiculturalism is currently shown from the interaction. Here you can see this uh, of the small shop seller from the different area and then locals, domestic, and even international visitor. And also Andong and Becha. In built environment aspect, further uh, development, uh, on the preserving uh, shop houses, hate are needed uh, because in because until 1975, most of buildings are still high and low hate, creating the rhythm you can see here. And then in the skyline, and to add more openness uh, to the street and provide a better vista. And then here we have uh, our map layering in Malioboro shop houses area from May for from uh, four main maps to identification. And the red color means a uh, commercial area, as you can see here. It's from the segment two, and then here's from uh, segment three. And here we have uh, later on the most detailed old maps we got from uh, 1941 from Paika. As you can see here on the maps, uh, there is no significant change in the function uh, of the area, but it becomes uh, more crowded here. And in this forest, so many intangible aspects uh, we get uh, after the golden period began to decline. There were long political conflict, such as a World War II, the Japanese occupation, and then the instability of the newly independent Indonesian government. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, example is a Grand Ina Garuda is one of the evidence of Indonesian and evidence uh, independence process and become one of a uh, management of change in Malioboro. And then the hotel has undergone several changes in the form here and uh, in the name here, as you can see uh, from the maps and this uh, 3D illustration and the map change process. Here in uh, Japanese occupation, the name is Hotel Ashashi. And then in the Indonesian independence newly era, uh, named Hotel Merdeka, uh, due to political condition and to secure a republic to the city of Yogyakarta, become the capital city of Republic Indonesia. And temporarily, uh, the Hotel Merdeka here uh, was made into office by the cabinet minister and the headquarter of uh, Indonesian fighter at that time. And then, here we have uh, uh, an example of, uh, for one of uh, for the evidence of Indonesian independent process. Uh, from the left is we have the there is uh, RT 
air, air attack but carried out by British uh, Royal Air Force in 1945 uh, were actually to silence uh, the broadcast. Uh, the building here uh, used by RRA is a radio uh, for Indonesia. And then, uh, however, the attack was misplaced and hit Mataram uh, Hall Society, the Varanagin in the north. And then this picture is show us about independence uh, movement in Hotel Merdeka. Uh, from the picture and the history on it, uh, we know that Malioboro and Margot Tomo also a witness from Indonesian uh, independent process. And here we have a timeline uh, of Malioboro. And then in the 99, in the 2019, uh, been, there is a bear, uh, experiment for no motorcycle on Malioboro Street. Here you can see from 1918, 20, 2012, 2013, 2016, and then 2019. Okay. Uh, here we have the since the independence of Tugu, uh, since the independence until now, Tugu to zero kilometer has largely changed start from uh, the facade, the function, even the load scale. And then many factors uh, trigger this, such as a new policy, um, change of ownership, and even a bankrupt bankruptcy and some of our uh, shop houses. But uh, with the support from the government, education personnel, and the private sector and communities, some has been preserved and uh, to conserve uh, more become to uh, cultural heritage here. We have uh, Tugu, Tugu, Hotel Tugu become a heritage and Tugu train station and for Fredeberg become a museum. And here we did uh, some color code for the facade uh, transformation from Tugu to zero kilometers. And uh, this is uh, the example. And uh, most of them at the beginning have the colonial style, uh, colonial style because of uh, the Dutch uh, colonialism interference. And then, um, here we have shop houses facade transformation. Uh, most of our uh, shop houses have a uh, modern and in this uh, style in 20th century. Here we have from uh, 2011 and 2021, tw uh, 1908 and then post independence uh, 2019. Here, the, uh, the color code for uh, facade transformation. And uh, as an uh, imperial uh, social cultural stereotype of Chinese ethnic in Indonesia, is indicated by their tendency to reside in a group creating enclave within uh with uh, within a city which us which are mostly center of the trade area we have a chinese settlement in the malioboro margomulio and uh, margo utomo street then they most on they mostly own shop along the major route uh, and only a few of them lives uh, specially and spirited from the fellows and surrounded by japanese uh, Chinese uh, also were the ones who brought uh, the technology of printing batik, which is uh, was which was able uh, to meet uh, the need for the mass production here. And then. Uh, from the historic urban landscape approach, we learned that Malioboro as an urban heritage conservation and also play an important role uh, in the development of Batik, uh, starting from the fr starting sold from the uh, open air market to Batik stall, which is uh, which are now widely spread along the route here, uh, and we. 
which can be seen on the map. Uh, there are around 40, uh, 40 batik shop uh, and then many uh, street vendor along the corridor. Uh, this is the example uh, uh, that the street, the street uh, vendor sold batik. And then this is uh, uh, the famous, uh, the famous and the biggest uh, batik shop in Yogyakarta, uh, uh, pass, uh, bring Harjo Market, and then the there are some legendary batik shop in Malioboro, uh, such as uh, batik Trangbulan, uh, batik Margaria, and batik Suenardi. And then as a form of a batik preservation, several performances that are celebrated every year on the Malioboro Street uh, Future uh, Batik. Here we can see there's a festival and the performance uh, we are batik. And then there is even a special event for batik and its development. And it also can be said to be a center for displaying batik for all over the archipelago. Here we have a uh, Jogja International Batik Biennale. Here you can see, and this is our uh, table about the facade transformation in Batik Show from 1941 to 1921. Here, some uh, the example like uh, Batik Sekar here, and then Batik Rubini and the others. And here, uh, come to the conclusion, uh, conclusion that dividing the chronological uh, transformation of Tugu to zero kilometer with the support of four years uh, as the main reference data result in a clear and sequential identification of history of the area and its relation to the historic urban landscape and uh, historical puzzle arrangement that has been found that can provide an overview of the development uh, of the area, uh, where good value can be taken, which will be applied again in management. And then uh, historic urban landscape, such a helpful, helpful approach to identify the historic urban landscape as in uh, Yogyakarta city from the four tools. Here we have uh, from the community engagement, we know about Dutch colonialism, Kosultanan, Chinese settlement, uh, Yogyakarta civilians and tourism. Uh, give a big impact uh, on Tugu on on Tugu to zero kilometers, and then in the knowledge uh, and the planning, there are cultural heritage, earthquake, superiority, value, and digitalization. Uh, and in the financial approach, we have uh, trade support and bankruptcy. And then in regulation system, uh, there are cultural cell cell and then decentralization with and the Indo Indonesia independence and special region of Yogyakarta. All of them uh, that give a big impact on the Tugu to zero kilometers that we learn from the historic urban landscape tools. And then uh, from the history that we learn from the historic urban landscape, we also know that uh, historic of Batik are uh, also found in Malioboro that can stretch in uh, Yogyakarta as a world Batik city. And in, addi in addition, uh, the research team has a uh, difficulty in collecting data, especially between the years 1930s nine uh, to 1960. Uh, it, it is a hope that uh, the next researcher will able to complement uh, the data as well as the shortcoming on the current research team. Uh, That's all from me. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Mutia. Your presentation is very interesting. Yeah, my notes that uh, what uh, Mutia presented uh, here was very important data, especially for uh, Jogja, yeah, from identification and documentation in only one month. Uh, the result of the working together of 
23 students yeah uh, and then this presentation also represents yeah the contribution of scholar uh, communities yeah in heritage conservation so if many uh, education institutions um, give a contribution like this so the big data will be more complete yeah okay uh, and then now we uh, comes to the last uh, presentation the fourth presenter will be professor dr uh, baikuni ma uh, he is a professor in geography faculty of uh, geography uh, universitas gajah mada he was graduated from ugm for his undergraduate in geography Master of Arts in Development Studies from the Institute of School Social Studies, Den Haag, the Netherlands, and his doctor in geography from UKM in Sandwich with Utrecht University, the Netherlands. Professor Baikuni is also an NGO activist in the Institute of, uh, for Rural Technology Development, Urban Forum, ideas or institute of development and environmental studies insist or indonesian society for social transformation and kalam eco village community he also was the former director of center for tourism studies head of magister and doctoral program in tourism studies head of the uh, head of department of development geography and chairperson of for Pim Chiu. He also active at national policy level, serves as a head, as a ad hoc advisory board in some ministries, such as Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, Ministry of Environment and Forestry, Ministry of Education and Culture, and also the Government of Indonesia, of Yogyakarta Special Region and uh, Sleman Regency. Uh, Professor Baikuni research interest covers several areas such as innovative leadership and public policy, regional development planning, environmental management, heritage conservation, community development, sustainable livelihood, sustainable tourism development, archipelago development, sustainable development goals. Yeah. He works at grassroots level as as painting artist and batik creative artworks <laughs> wow yeah okay and then uh, today he will uh, give a presentation on community development in heritage conservation in indonesia so uh, prof baikuni your time uh, is uh, 30 minutes yeah please thank you very thank you. much uh, ibu duita and uh, Ibu Sita and other colleagues, I really enjoy the uh, sharing of uh, from the speaker, uh, Professor Nizam, and then Professor uh, uh, Kyoko Kanke, and nice to meet you, Professor Ulrika Herpik, and also the last one, yeah, uh, Ms. Mutia uh, Muyashara, a very interesting uh, research and uh, very detailed data and it's quite interesting for sharing. Uh, I really enjoy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all the participants, I try to share some uh, information regarding with the community development in archipelago uh, country. Uh, I give. I will give some uh, case study, uh, three case study, and hopefully. Uh, it can um, bring the ideas how the diversity of nature and culture in such kind of country of Indonesia. Is my presentation can be seen in Kudwita? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the title is Community Development and Heritage Conservation in Archipelago Country Context of Indonesia. Uh, we have an uh, archipelago with the diversity of nature and culture, and we need some approach related to the community development, 
participatory approach and it is very important to use the uh, multimedia and uh, information technology with the digital uh, data bring all the things can be accessed uh, for the public uh, in the many area of development and we will uh, share three uh, case study to go in depth uh, the situation with the Borobudur and Prambanan cultural uh, heritage community development in OP Island it is small and remote and then in Raja Ampat uh, West Papua, this is a natural conservation uh, area and some reflection. Uh, as we discussed yesterday as well as, as introduction, there is the role of community and heritage conservation as a pivot point. It's very important. It's why? Because they are playing a guard and guide to the conservation. Community participation can be included in public policy making and management, such as plan formulation, implementation, supervision, monitoring, and evaluation. So let the people uh, be participated in every uh, process of development in their own area. So it is, uh, there are so many cases where the participatory development uh, can be part of a sustainable development continuing because they have ownership Handar Penny or uh, in the local name is uh, Handar Penny is uh, uh, ownership of the process of development so people or community they need a collaboration with others they cannot work uh, alone uh, unless uh, they should uh, work together in many parts of the process of development. If we know the situation in Indonesia, uh, this is a big country, uh, if you can, uh, the distance from uh, Western to Eastern is around like uh, from London to Tehran, to Tehran in, in Iran, how can uh, the diversity is, is uh, access over there in terms of uh, ecosystem, uh, natural resources, as well as, as, well as uh, cultural heritage. And we will share the three uh, case study, Borobudur and Prambanan in the central Java and Obi Island in the frontier, uh, the north uh, part of uh, Maluku and Raja Ampat is the natural conservation in uh, Papua, West Papua. As we know that uh, Indonesia is also mega marine biodiversity, uh, coral triangle that can be uh, have so many potencies for uh, livelihood and uh, tourism or fisheries and other uh, activities. Indonesia is be part of the World Coral Triangle in tropical zone with the hotspot in this area, in the eastern part of Indonesia. So the richness of uh, fisheries and um, coral reef can be uh, useful for people to sustaining their livelihood. So it's why the Indonesia proposed the co collaboration uh, among the six countries uh, neighborhood from Papua New Guinea, uh, Solomon Island, Philippines, the Philippines, uh, Malaysia, and then Timor Leste. Uh, with the six uh, joining country, they set up the very beautiful office in the Manado. Uh, North Sulawesi. Beside this, uh, Indonesia has so many uh, culinary arts with uh, um, spicy uh, island with uh, spicy uh, product and culinary art is very diverse. And 
there are some issues related to the archipelago development uh, from the concept to collaboration for action. One very uh, recently and uh, influencing is the climate change and COVID-19 challenge to archipelago and island country. So how can we uh, create the strategy for each island because uh, they need a uh, different approach to tackle the climate change and the COVID-19 challenge. Uh, it is different with Jakarta or metropolitan of uh, area with other area in, in remote area. So that is also important, the commitment of the leader to change the better uh, development process environment and economy balance and harmonization is very important and the capacity building and training to create the cadre uh, the young people who are working in the field is also very important conference for sharing knowledge and knitting experience is also useful for the future of development Coordination and mutual understanding, collaboration for strategic action, community participation and empowerment, and then connecting smart digital business with uh, uh, small scale entrepreneurs. So it is uh, some ideas to tackle and to develop a community based tourism and also community uh base uh, for heritage conservation so heritage conservation can be related to the sustainable tourism it is important to shifting the paradigm of continental to archipelago paradigm which is uh, approach that uh, consider the diversity of nature and culture and try to promote uh, strategic uh, development issue from within from this island itself so the local wisdom and other appropriate technological practices is very important as well. Basic education, especially geography, maritime, and other uh, field of study is very important for uh, guiding for the future development. Then also the tourism, trade, and investment interrelated in a developing economy and conservation of the ecosystem. And then also we have to deal with the sustainable development goals. This is part of our common uh, goals to create a collaboration uh, around the world. So we have discussed yesterday uh, and today we try to replay again uh, the community development is the development which is a collective activity based on the same ideas, thinking, and purpose in order to achieve a certain goals or objective. So the community isn't treated as an object, but as the subject of development. They can actively participate in the planning process and uh, management of the development. And also the importance of communication in community development to share knowledge, ex experience, create commitment into action. It is uh, building the uh, consciousness and uh, collaborating in uh, implementing some commitment and program for action. So community can evaluate also the resource management based on the information and stakeholder can use this information for advanced development and do action research. I think uh, one of the important thing that Vita mentioned uh, my work about uh, sustainable livelihood. I, I work my dissertation in a livelihood strategy during the crisis in uh, five different uh, villages and ecosystem. So the role of the community uh, development should be related to the sustainable livelihood. Otherwise, uh, they need also, the people need also improve their own capacity and their own asset. Uh, the people uh, 
have uh, human capital, natural capital, financial capital, uh, physical capital, and social capital as pentacle asset, and they can share uh, to other uh, with the process of the policy of program and action oriented uh, development. Now we go to the case number one, learning from the past history of Borobudur and Prambanan. Close to us, around us here, uh, I just uh, live in uh, one mile away from Prambanan temples. It's not far away, I'm, I'm, I'm villagers. And also often uh, go to the Borobudur and Prambanan temple for uh, having some uh, development of community tourism, community base, and conservation of the heritage. As the Borobudur Heritage Conservation, there are so many uh, panels or uh, uh, scarfing stone telling about the process of the kind at the past. And we can learn from, from the situation in the past, how they're traveling by boats, uh, by uh, sailing to other region, to Madagascar in Africa or to uh, northern uh, part of Asia and Southeast Asia. The wooden ship uh, of the Borobudur uh, tell about the story of the spicy trading of the archipelago uh, in the 1200 or 100 uh, 1,200 1, years ago. Uh, and now today we have to introduce such kind of knowledge of the heritage to the people, especially the young people, the student, uh, in, for active uh, learning about the nature and culture. And it is very important to use uh, art performance and, and mu local music tradition for attracting uh, for the learning process. They can learn about the diversity of surrounded uh, flora and fauna and uh, active uh, edu tourism. And Borobudur last year, 2020, we have a festival of uh, workshop Wood Wayang Wei. Wayang is a shadow puppet. Uh, we need collaboration of cultural conservation with other community. Um, the Wayang, Wood Wayang Way is one uh, try to promote again the, the traditional art performance and useful for transfer the knowledge and transform the new story uh, to the young generation. So there is uh, even during the pandemic we try to uh, have some kind of meeting in in the field uh, and making some kind of uh, sharing collaboration and also spirit that the young generation will lead for the future should know about the history and the art performance of the wayang and the story of of the future of their own uh, journey uh, during the pandemic, because of situation, we can share Ruat uh, Rawat Borobudur by online. Pak Sucoro, one of the activists in the cultural uh, conservation, they try to uh, create um, cultural congress in Borobudur, and they also have a yearly uh, festival with the community grassroots level. Now we move to the next, to the Prambanan Heritage Tourism, uh, Heritage Temple. This is Hindu temple and uh, ninth century as well, uh, like Borobudur, the Buddhism temple. Located uh, close to Yogyakarta, 17 kilometer. It's not far away. And Bor Prambanan also have uh, inspiration for the, the sky, Crapping uh, skyscrapers uh, high building from the key of the uh, construction between the stone and now can be scaling up to the like Petronas uh, 
maybe it is uh, look like uh, the prambanan can be scaling up like that and also in japan uh, because uh, it was uh, rebuilt together by, between indonesian with the support of jaika japanese uh, international cooperation agency and also they also learn uh, so many uh, engineering and construction and architecture about the uh, temple and now implemented and developed and innovate for the uh, modern building uh, all over the world. Ar surrounded there are some uh, economic potencies uh, like artisan, some artists also creative industry, fine art painting and also uh, some houses uh, to be uh, art expo uh, with the film or uh, workshop for creating the new uh, arts and educating for the children. And close to this area, there are some wooden uh, craft for words or for higher classes and other use of uh, daily uh, activities so creative industry from the handicraft to the much more precise and prestigious uh, goods like uh, what so this is important to create uh, livelihood to develop livelihood and sustainable livelihood uh, as what they say what it is uh, like the farmer or aquaculture in our village here to optimize the, the local uh, household um, product um, like animal husbandry and uh, fish pound utilization of uh, uh, and, and emergence of the new uh, collecting the bird and net, uh, breeding the bird and they sell to other region. And as you see that I make my paddock here uh, with uh, my wife in, in, in the bamboo house. And it is quite interesting, bring uh, my memory come back to when I was a uh, teenager in Labian Solo. Uh, I, I was a, a painter, paddock painter. Now I try again and I use my uh, second second hand clothes uh, and I put the colorful uh, of batiks. But I have to learn how organic uh, color will be more uh, appropriate for uh, batik for the next coming uh, years. I think I have to learn from Ibu Sita, Ibu Duita and other participants here how to create a batik with the organic uh, color coloring. So we try now go to the other islands. Uh, hopefully I still have time to, 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 to go. There are another two uh, case studies. So we go to the art Chipalago Arts Venture. Yeah? Uh, we try to have some kind of meeting uh, last year how we can uh, invite them for sharing about the arts from the archipelago context. But uh, I try to have a two a case study, the case number two, community development in small frontier island of Obi. Obi Island is a small island in, in North uh, Maluku. It is uh, island with uh, high investment on on what is that uh, mining uh, copper uh, sorry not copper but uh, mining of uh, uh, metals that's very useful for the battery for the future but we can see there are a lot of children in this island and we try to uh, meet with them together in open space in the in the 
uh, front yard of the the school and we try to present the video uh, and and we take video before and then we try to uh, put in the big screen and then share with them and they try to uh, explain what is the situation of the education uh, and the environment in this uh, area. We see that uh, we have some experience for some doing some action like cleaning the beach because so many waste uh, spread over the, the beach. And we use also local material for making handicraft, also playing the games and sport with the children. And then we try to uh, document this and try to uh, develop such kind of uh, activity together in, in during certain night. And look, the student very uh, interested to see what they have been done in, in the days before. I mean, uh, we can reflect that uh, the children in small island, they have lack of education facilities, lack of teacher, lack of uh, young people who motivated them. And I think uh, we can portray of this situation and how uh, we can develop uh, this situation. So some uh, student we send to this area, this island, to have some kind of community service. We think that uh, the key person, key player of the community development is the teacher. This is the teacher we try, we have to understand what is the challenge, what is the problem, can we uh, support some of them and how they uh, can create uh, problem solving based on their own uh, capacity. And we need to uh, improve their capacity, especially for the information, the support of the finance and as well as the uh, motivation uh, for the for them we also communicate and sharing with the student and their parents it is important that uh, problem solving of education not only from the student and teacher but also from the family uh, especially uh, the mother of the student this is a meeting in public hall that uh, we can share some uh, problem solving for especially for education we also uh, discuss in the class what is the uh, problem of development and how we solve and uh, bring the future vision to achieve the next coming uh, year and tickets. Also, communication and sharing with the woman is very important because it depends on uh, where the uh, group of people, group of community exists over there. And then we back to campus, do some reflection and follow up uh, for action. And we have learned from this that uh, sometimes uh, the theory from the book is not relevant but uh, since we have some experience from the field then the theory can be uh, formulated again and to contextualize to be appropriate for archipelago country like Indonesia. Now the third uh, case Raja Ampat the Emerald of Equator Tropical Zone this is one of the wonderful place and uh, the destination for marine tourism and Actually, there are some ideas from the combination between investor and villagers to improve the uh, village as eco-village and build some uh, local economy uh, like uh, homestay for uh, get the income from the tourists. And actually, the homestays, uh, owned and operated by the community enterprise and they have some kind of group of uh, network among the spreaded 
islands and kampungs. Uh, they have some uh, homestay, and the homestay is uh, look like the local houses, but with some modification and with some uh, new uh, facilities and uh, other uh, architectural design which is appropriate to the local material. And it's quite interesting that from time to time there is a growing, fast growing uh, local small scale enterprise run by uh, local people. And one of the uh, amazing uh, of attraction in this place is uh, bird watching. Uh, it's Raja Ampat Community Based Conservation, uh, Natural Conservation, and the uh, local people playing a uh, role as the guide and card. As a guide, they showing the how we can best uh, time for watching the birds, Cendrawasih bird. From the card, they will conserve. Uh, they not uh, uh, cutting the wood. It is because uh, the forest is very important. Is the habitat for uh, this uh, very endangered uh, bird in the western part of Indonesia. Sorry, in the eastern part of Indonesia. So the natural conservation in small island with the unique flora and fauna is very important. Then uh, the last one, we try to continue the archipelago action research expedition from 2000, sorry, 14, not 16, to 2020. Uh, and I think it is important to have such kind of uh, international collaboration with other partners here to go beyond from 2021 to 2025. As uh, Professor uh, Nizam said uh, that we open for collaboration, international collaboration, then I think this is one opportunity for uh, doing the research and collaboration for action. And we try to shifting from the continental paradigm to uh, archipelago paradigm sustainable sustainable development to uh, considering the diversity of nature and culture and trying to uh, search an alternative solution from within from the community itself from the capacity of the community and also from the um, the future generation that uh, bring them together in a commitment for action. I think uh, this is my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Ibu Duita. Uh, time uh, back to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Pak Paikuni. It's very uh, interesting and give, uh, give uh, us uh, the uh, uh, yeah, the environment of uh, Indonesia. My notes is that every area has its uh, heritage potential yeah, in culture and nature. And then uh, many challenges also faced. Uh, so the most important is to develop the uh, conservation strategies. Yeah. And then for that, understanding the potency of the heritage area that relate to the community livelihood is uh, needed in order to develop the conservation strategy. I think the most important strategy is sharing with and involving the community and working with the community in cultural and natural conservation. Okay, uh, thank you, Pak Paikuni. So, uh, yeah, after all of uh, this presentation, then uh, time for uh, question, comment, answer, and uh, discussion. So, please, uh, please, 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 who will uh, ask question? Please. 
Bu Dwita. Ya. Saya Bu. Siapa ya? Yeah. Oh dia, yeah. please. Um, is dia from US. <laughs> It was such a great presentation, and uh, my question is for uh, Kanki Sensei. Um, the community teachers who came to the schools, were they professionally um, paid for their experience or are they, or are they volunteers? I saw that because um, it's very inspiring. It's um, something that we can probably apply to batik artisans in, in Yogyakarta. So that's my question. This, uh, San. Okay, thank you very much for your question. And uh, uh, I, I must actually, I must make sure in some way, um, because sometimes there is special program Maybe some budget they have, but uh, uh, basically that is volunteered. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, but the community community itself having a small budget uh, for yearly uh, activities by their their own uh, how to say uh, the year <laughs> payment <laughs> to the community. Oh, so itself. you mean the uh, mm -hmm. the artisan community or the school? Uh, no, uh, community having uh, their own budget. Uh, for example, uh, one household might pay a little bit for every month to the community activities and to, to collect such uh, money to utilize in, for the activities of the community. It's a case by case actually. And, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, the community teachers uh, uh, set up by the elementary school uh, is a little bit an independent system from such a community. So uh, it is volunteered, maybe, basically. And uh, because what is the motivation for the community members is uh, the community is the establisher of the elementary school. <laughs> so they think this is my elementary school. <laughs> they have such a, not, uh, such a perception or something. So it is a kind of the, the how to say, custom, <laughs> custom for the members of the com uh, community to collaborate with the school. But uh, at the same time, there, there is some, something to, to be paid for. Uh, for example, buying some materials or so buying some facilities right. or something. Sometimes that is maybe supported by the, sometimes by the city government or school themselves, mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. it is not regularly in sometimes in such a cases. So, so the, the daily activities by the community member may be volunteered or some supported by themselves. But uh, the preparing a little bit of special things, sometimes from the schools or sometimes from the city government. And school budget is from the city government, actually. So, so it was quite uh, uh, complicated, actually. But uh, somebody <laughs> support, actually. So that is a kind of the management. For example, sometimes I have a budget for our students <laughs> and the students can collaborate with school. And that is a kind of the budget from university. <laughs> so that is a management case by case. So that is one of the community development. Let me see, I see. Mm. All right, thank you so much. Okay, other question, please. <laughs> It's okay. I have a question. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation, uh, Mr. Bagni, about the, the kind of the how to say uh, more powerful collaboration between the the towns and the villages all over Indonesia, and I really interested about such, uh, how to say, uh, the collaboration among the, the different areas. 
And it is necessary for us to have a such a collaboration, maybe more wider sometimes with uh, uh, the worldwide scale. And uh, I, I think what is possible, for example, uh, how we can set up the, the worldwide activities for the keeping, keeping beautiful seashore, for example. Uh, sometimes we tried, uh, maybe more than 100 years, <laughs> and there is so many types of the collaboration, but uh, now we should have more powerful one, I think. What is your <laughs> recommendation for us? <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ken. Kanki, yeah, Professor Kanki, uh, uh, we are archipelago country, yeah? Japan, mm. Philippines, Indonesia. Actually, my dissertation want to uh, make comparison studies between uh, three uh, archipelago country. Uh, but my supervisor, no, 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 it's too big. Uh, <laughs> just create one small thing that if you succeeded to get a PhD, then you can go beyond then okay now it's the time for doing collaboration because uh, uh, i think uh, this the diversification or the strategy of uh, diversification is very important because the development tend to monoculturization mm. all of the mm. world mm. so uh, then we have to have some kind of the archipelago paradigm Mm -hmm. This is my uh, professor uh, uh, keynote uh, speaker at the time uh, when I, uh, the government given me mm -hmm. as a professor, mm -hmm. then I deliver the speak on the archipelago paradigm, how mm -hmm. important the diversification, the diversification of the development because uh, it is related to the ecosystem that uh, if we have uh, the diversification of the system, mm. it is uh, very uh, sustainable and, and uh, getting stronger rather than monoculturization of development. Mm. Mm. But we can use uh, such kind of uh, digital technology for yeah, communication yeah. with others. So I think uh, we have some kind of uh, network mm. uh, in so many islands. We can uh, connect with them and also there is also one uh, UNDP program related to the Archipelago and Island State Forum. Oh. Uh, we can, uh, we can uh, link with them as well uh, to share. And I think after this, uh, we can discuss with Ibu Sita and Buduita how we can follow up this uh, kind of uh, summer school to have more uh, diverse and to promote the island's uh, leaders or, or cadres. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, then we have some university or NGOs and local government who are eager to work together. For example, uh, related to the uh, arts and, and, and craft, yeah? mm -hmm. uh, handicraft or mm -hmm. something like uh, Sulaman or something. Uh, uh, tenun uh, mm -hmm. and also petik because uh, we have some study related to the, the geography of patiks because the pattern of the patik from the coastal zone and mm -hmm. mountain or in the inland is different and why is different and what the story behind that we can learn uh, together about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can connect with the more efficient using mm -hmm. some such kind of uh, digital uh, device uh, like, mm -hmm. like this. And I'm agree that after this, we should uh, collaborate more to encourage uh, other people, other friends in, in remote area in Japan, Japan as a, in Philippines and Indonesia mm -hmm. work together uh, related to the archipelago paradigm. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. after the after ten years ago, the tsunami and disaster, uh, there is so many destruction of the seashore to make a huge wall or to put the, everything onto the hillside and uh, and uh, at the same time uh, the the 
beach area with uh, prospecting uh, the next tsunami disaster, uh, there is no way to make um, positive things in the seashore. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that is a kind of this is destruction at the same time. So it, it is very, very difficult to fight against it. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a trend at the same time. So thank you very much. It is really, really meaningful. Thank, thank you. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, interesting monoculturalization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds uh, not good. <laughs> okay. Dudita, this is questions from Chichi. Oh. Chi. Yeah. Okay. Chi from please. Vietnam. Mm. Why well, I can see Chichi, please. Yeah, Li Queen's Chi. Yes, so uh, good afternoon and uh, Sita Sensei and Kanti Hi, Yeah, I think uh, I met you. <laughs> yes, uh, I joined the um, workshop, I think maybe uh, more than 10 years ago. And now I work in um, university in Vietnam. Uh, so um, uh, just uh, briefly that uh, recently we also uh, um, surveyed many village. Uh, around in, uh, in the north of Vietnam and especially uh, surrounding Hanoi. And uh, because of um, uh, urbanization, uh, the village um, facing with the lo uh, losing the population. So uh, many historical buildings become vacant. And um, if, uh, in the last uh, five years, we tried to work with the local government but now we discover that when we work with the local government, uh, without the community involvement, it's not stable because the, the local government just have uh, five years. And then after five years, they change and the new oh. local government, they, they don't support us anymore because they, they prefer something new development. So now I, I have to rethink how to uh how to make the how to reapproach again so today uh thank you for all the presentation i um it um it uh, helped me to have some idea like uh, maybe i can work with a uh, school or i can work um can host a workshop student workshop in the uh, in, in such a village to um to improve the situation uh, so, um, and uh, I, um, I think that um, from the uh, uh, presentation of uh, Dr. Bai, Bai Kuni, sorry, I, Bai, the last presentation, uh, he mentioned about the uh, homestay out and operated by community enterprise. Community enterprise, I think I, I would like to know more about the community enterprise how it organized, how it function, uh, and how it finance. So that I think that such kind of system, maybe I can learn and I can propose for Vietnam situation. Thank you. Yeah, langsung dulu ya. Yeah, monggo. Yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, quite interesting for the last one. And you can, you can uh, see from the website, uh, racha4homestay.com ya. Uh, nah, I will uh, apa, uh, chat with you in, in, the, in the chat box about the link. And there are quite interesting, uh, of course, uh, need some kind of combination between uh, community organizing uh, organizer with uh, people, uh, some, some creator which can set up the system because this is remote area and they have to have some commitment to share the, the guests and and uh, to redistribute the, the guests to the kampung. There are spreaded island that uh, not easy to handle directly one by one by uh, uh, homestay operator, but they can have some kind of collaboration uh, mm -hmm. in this region. And with the digital marketing and, and uh, operation, mm -hmm. it will be useful. And there are some commitment to share and to play in justice role uh, 
if there are some uh, guests or tourists uh, purchase the, the 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 package and they can or this you can go there or you can go there so there is no a free fight competition but fairness uh, cooperation and this is uh, quite interesting and and you can learn from the website how they link uh, each other with them and there are some students from Gajah Mada University from my university uh, sent over that and to develop some uh, yeah activity uh, to improve the uh, sanitation to improve water to improve the uh, building or even the culinary uh, uh, processing so uh, we also have some opportunity to learn from the local wisdom. So the student from the university, they have uh, two month experience in the field and they can implement some uh, concept or knowledge from the campus to the community, but also they can learn from the community experience for the future uh, uh, journey of, uh, of career in the future uh, of the student. So there's some, some kind of uh, community service from the campus university to the community, but also there are some uh, cooperation between them uh, in, in the using the digital uh, framework. Thank you. Um, thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Uh, this is a question, chat. Uh, after this, uh, Tali, yeah, from uh, Laura. Uh, maybe I can read. Transmitting how important it is to respect local materials in conservation or repair is basic in the community as well. But climate change, conservation work also needs to be adapted to the new situation too. What criteria can we use? and decide on the best intervention without giving up its identity. This is uh, for all the panelists. So uh, I think uh, uh, start from Kanki and then Uli and Pak Paikuni and uh, oh, Mutia and Pak this. Okay, thank you for your question. And the uh, climate change is really, really important and uh, difficult. Uh, condition for us, for especially for the coming coming uh, one century or something, and uh, uh, about Kyoto, we like to promote the wooden houses more and more because uh, the basically traditional uh, buildings and the environment is uh, made by the wood and the bamboos or some other uh, kind of natural resources. But uh, actually, the wood materials is very expensive now, and uh, the, we have the difficulty of the forestry itself. It, it is quite a declined industry in this moment, and uh, the importing the wood material is more major. But it is also becoming expensive, and uh, and especially the 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 normal family cannot pay so much for the, uh, the new buildings. And uh, at, the, at the same time, in this moment, we usually having a decline of the economy in Japan. So the paying the much money for the new things uh, from the, the public side, uh, public uh, sector is also often criticized by the citizens. So, so, Ongoing, <laughs> we are just in the ongoing discussion. About, but the, basically, basically, we must deconstruct the, the system of the material. So we must keep the forest and it must keep the bamboo. And basically, it is necessary. So it is not easy, but uh, we must restart, I think. And some younger uh, forestry keepers or new people to like to. Uh, the, the recreate the, the, the natural resources is a little bit, little bit increasing now. <laughs> so I think uh, maybe it, the 
original resources and the imported resources and the new resources will coexist for the future, but uh, don't give up to, <laughs> to keep the, the natural resources, and especially in the, your nearby situation. And uh, so it's quite a long-term problem at the same time, but uh, but the cultural heritage idea is something like that, I think. <laughs> we, we can plan for the next 100 years or something for the heritage conservation. So in such a uh, the kind of the idea of the scale, we can provide uh, our own resources from nature to having a balance with the, the human and the nature. And so just to put the new things, but the, the how we can grow up the nature. I think it is my idea, but uh, it is quite a long term idea. <laughs> but possible, I think, I hope. It is yeah. okay. <laughs> it's okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Uli, please. Uh, yeah, uh, I think this is a, a very good point that uh, Kanki Sensei uh, said here. And I think what, uh, what we also have to rethink about the natural material and uh, use them as a base for develop new materials. So composite material, whatever. So to go to uh, more innovative uh, techniques for restoring buildings and uh, this is something what will come up in the next year. So we will have to use uh, mainly, and, and this would be very good to think about, how to use CO2 neutral material to, ve to, value, to develop new composites. So to uh, restore uh, traditional or historical buildings. So I'm speaking now for Europe, of course, mainly where we have uh, more stone and earthen houses. But this is something that we try to develop now or to, um, to do with this uh, castle that I presented before, to have a case study building where we can try to develop this new material. And I think what is very important is to facilitate um, existing cultural heritage objects to develop those kind of things. And this is quite um, coming back to the, uh, the point we were talking about today, that some people in the communities or the, the communities themselves have these objects and are willing to participate in these kind of developments. Because of course, it is always a kind of, um, yeah, try and error in some cases, or things that are taking perhaps longer than just restoring it with, Anorganic and perhaps not so sustainable material that we have done in the last years, but uh, especially climate change is something that we have to face. We have to uh, consider in all our in all our ideas for the conservation of cultural heritage, and I think to reconsider and reflect on traditional methods and techniques and materials and to bring them further to new ways of preservation, restoration and conservation will be the most important aspects we have to deal with in the next years. Yeah. Hello, Uli? Yeah. It's just from my side. I, this is always okay. a bit bad because I'm sitting again in the car. <laughs> so, oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm also steering the car, so I don't want to, to talk yeah, yeah. too long to be more concentrated okay. on the traffic. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mutia, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's all. Uh, very informative uh, answer from uh, Professor Kanki and Dr. Ulri. And then I want, uh, just want to give an addition about the pay attention in a large uh, scale of the uh, planning for, uh, uh, for the climate change that we, uh, we can use uh, to choose and decide it on the best uh, interaction without uh, giving up on its identity. And the idea of uh, the historic urban landscape itself provided to uh, natural values. Uh, and then 
uh, we must pay attention uh, for the priority risks and then combine it with the climate scenario. And then the second is uh, that we, we resilience and then adaptation and uh, integrate it for the uh, uh, glass, uh, host glass effect and uh, for mitigation. Uh, that's all for me. Yeah, thank you, Mutia. Pak Bae, please. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it is quite interesting uh, question that challenging uh, for the future. There are some new uh, situation that we have to adapt and adopt new technology as well. Related to the use of the local uh, material, then we can uh, have some kind of uh, creativity. Uh, especially in the rural area like uh, in 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 many places of indonesia they still have some kind of uh, wood or uh, local material that can be produced uh, with their own uh, uh, capacity we call it appropriate technology so we need some appropriate technology and uh, with the combination the unique local design so uh, combination between the wood and and stone and uh, bricks and other material can be part of the uh, new uh, atmosphere for for it's not only the the building but also the arts and uh, this such kind of art use reuse of the uh, material that already become waste so my house, especially as many uh, with uh, or wooden, broken wooden that I collect and then reconstruct uh, again to be more uh, appropriate. So sometimes it's not, uh, what is that? Uh, it's not standard as the uh, shape and, and a pattern, but if we can use of the arts uh, and architectural design, I think it is much more eco-friendly and eco-design uh, or uh, adapting with the climate change. So my house is no, not with uh, air condition because I try to use uh, more uh, local and, and, and local material as well as the uh, combination with the trees and, and other open space in the roof, something like that. So the air can be circulated with the uh, low uh, energy. This is just example of combining between the local material, uh, adapting with the new situation and the uh, design, uh, architectural design. Even though I'm not architect by uh, school, but actually I want to be architect, but now I'm become geographer. <laughs> okay, I learned from the Pusita and Budwita as architect then, and then Kanki I will also learn from you as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So climate change need innovation. Yeah, in all aspects. Yes. Okay. Please tally your question comments. Hi, uh, it's been a very inspiring forum. I've learned a lot from all the experts. I'm really appreciating, although I don't have a question now, but I was very uh, uh, impressed by the presentation of Mutia that within such, such a short time, she presented, really, you presented a very professional, not only knowledgeable, but a very professional standard of presentation. So you can be proud of yourself and the university. Uh, now I wanted to comment uh, about two things that have to do with the community. Uh, first comment re refers to the question of the speaker from Vietnam. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Uh, she talked Qi. about how? Qi. 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 Okay. Qi. okay. Uh, the, the point of uh, the question, actually, she uh, asked uh, Professor Baikuni about 
ecology and how to uh, uh, continue with this. I want to make a point about an issue regarding ecology in tourism. I come from tourism. The, the point is that I was very impressed, uh, Professor Baikuni, but by what you said about the community in Raja Empat organizing uh, the issue of ecology as a community, as a cooperative. This is very important because my experience in other places, and for example, in Vietnam, where I worked and used ecologists, the problem is when ecologists are uh, built by foreigners that mm -hmm. come and they know exactly the concept of the tourists and they build such ecology and it's very appealing, but this takes the place of and the opportunity from the local community that it's actually their uh, heritage, they, their know-how. And this is, if we're talking about how to um, uh, develop the economy, this is an example how the local community can develop the economy using the heritage for tourism. Uh, so they could get the money and not a foreigner that comes and invests and, bring and builds a private ecology which is very nice, but misses the point from the angle of the community. So this is one comment I wanted to make. The other comment um, also has to do with the community, but from a different aspect. Uh, this goes back to, I think, things that several speakers said. I think Uli uh, spoke about that a lot, about the importance of bringing uh, the young people in the community through educating, involving the young people uh, to uh, lead and bring forward the importance uh, of the heritage. I think this is a really important point. And the two examples only that you brought from Jeddah and Samoa are really good examples because they show uh, one of the problems, the young people, um, they don't know in many cases, the, tradi the uh, traditional heritage, because they just, and their parents also don't know the meaning and the story behind it. The story is important and the meaning is very important because before uh, there was uh, any explanation about it, it was for them not uh, a meaningful, it was just the way they live. Before modernization, it was just culture, not traditional culture. The, the term traditional culture is something that is given by a comparison of modern to traditional. But people who lived, uh, the, the, the old people in Samoa that don't know the meaning of the um, shape of the building, they don't know because it, they just lived in it. The young people, when they know, they can go and explain and be proud and show this and brings additional value. And I think this is really an important point to bring in the story. And this is why I also think that community should be involved in everything, in all aspects of tourism. They have the story. They should be the ones presenting the story to the tourists because it becomes something very personal. So these are the two comments I wanted to add. Yeah, okay, thank you, Tali. Uh, any other comment? Question. Can I have a little bit more comment? Please, yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, during my presentation, I show uh, uh, one or two photograph of the, the old former Nishijin, old former elementary school buildings. Né? Uh, it is uh, like uh, 80 years old or so. And uh, now it's empty. <laughs> and uh, I, as I said, we discussed the uh, on and on and on and on, on <laughs> to find a new way to utilize, and uh, not just for the hotel, not just for the other facility, but uh, keeping the community and uh, having a new community and a new things to have by that buildings, and. Uh, 
And maybe such uh, activities, maybe all of you have, I think, <laughs> uh, in your field, oh, how to conserve these buildings or how to conserve this space or how to conserve this um, environment. And in such a case, we like to introduce alternative type tourism, always. And uh, how we can realize such a things <laughs> because the place is very locally located. And uh, but uh, basically the artistic or the cultural interchange is very welcome. And, uh, but it is very small, <laughs> so cannot welcome so many people, but uh, uh, we ask somebody to use this one as the kind of the uh, base camp for the, the new culture or something. I, I think uh, in this moment, actually, I think about such things for that empty building. Uh, welcoming some, not so many, but welcoming some people, or some students, some professor to, to think about a new culture or to work about a new culture and especially about the textile or the buildings and the climate change, many things. And uh, I was very impressed by the, the first remark by the, the mister from the, the government about uh, the new idea for the Indonesian high education, higher education system to have uh, such a collaboration all over the world and, uh, and uh, the curriculum and the other activities by the students can go around the wow. places. Is it possible <laughs> to connect to, to such a things about from the local to the such a high eco education? system, for, uh, for example, in Indonesia. <laughs> it's very, very I realistic can, I can, comment. <laughs> Sorry. I can, I, can, I can also answer a little bit about this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, in Indonesia, we have in our, our uh, curriculum, what mm. is called KKN. KKN. KKN, KKN mm. is a field mm. school Hmm. Uh, lectures. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the one that the, the, the student hmm. spend two or three months. So can be spread out of Indonesia. Hmm. Like I did sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's one. That is the way that then the students, under the guidance of the mm -hmm. a mentor, mm -hmm. There will be then the works with the community. Hmm. So, so that is the way of working on the field. And this is uh, something that uh, it should be done by hmm. all students, especially oh. in our university, but also oh. in other, other university. It's uh, no choice, you must. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I met yeah. sometimes in. In Java Island, <laughs> yeah. and uh, possibly uh, making it more wider <laughs> internationally. <laughs> mm, yeah, yes, actually, yes. I have now thinking about something new. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> very realistic. Uh, <laughs> Uh, please. Yeah, thank you, Tina. Uh, yeah, I think especially this um, going with the students to the villages and working with the communities is a, a, a super important point. But in working with the communities, also appreciate the knowledge in the communities and meeting them as the experts of the local wisdom and local knowledge, and also teaching this from the beginning to the students so that if they are later on, uh, I don't know, opinion leaders, decision makers, authorities, planners, and so on, that they are meeting the community uh, representatives as the experts as they are. So perhaps not in the field of a certain 
scientific discipline, but they do know about their community. They do know where certain material mm. are still available. And I think this is something super important to teach mm. the students from the beginning so that the future experts would from the beginning work and also listen to the people in the community so that you will gain a lot more information. And on the other hand, if you find out about innovative approaches or material, then the communities will much more appreciate if you are try to uh, implement it also in these regions. So I think this is a very important point that I wanted to make a remark here. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, Uli. Uh, time until 17.50. So, uh, any question or comments, please? Anyone that would like Anyone? to break your fasting, please be, feel free, <laughs> like me. <laughs> me too. <so>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I think my hand was Uli, Uli, from, before, yeah, yeah. from before. Please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, but I can, if it's still there, I just want to say I would really look very much forward to do this collaborative work that uh, is now possible even more with uh, this campus Mediaka approach. And I think there will be exciting times coming up where we can really do a very intensive exchange with universities all over the world. See, and work on this uh, interdisciplinary, international, uh, intercultural um, conservation approaches, which is really highly needed as we see it in so many cases. And I'm looking very much forward to really do this. Thanks. Yeah. yeah I okay. think I would like also to comment on this. Uh, <laughs> it is it's time because we have everybody here. So there will be from Israel, from India, from Vietnam, from Japan, from uh, Austria, from Indonesia and others countries. Uh, I think after this uh, summer course, maybe we supposed to prepare also another uh, continuing activities that may be more in the research uh, point that maybe can be uh, share because with, with with the moment of this and then we can also discuss with the director general of higher education that we will continue this activities maybe he will advise us with one that will be uh, better so i think we're supposed to continue uh, our activities in this and everybody are welcome to 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 discuss and we, we can have certain uh, focus in this case, and then we can continue our collaborations. Yeah, it's a good idea, Pu Sita. Uh, who else? Comment question, Pu Julita? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. first of yes. all, uh, thank you so much for all the presenter for the valuable presentation today. So I have a question to Professor Kanki. Uh, it's very interesting presentations and I, I really admire the children and the community system to keep the tradition and the traditional industry also alive for young generations. So my question is regarding the migration of the member of the community. Mm. Are they open migrate or move to other area? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, uh, yes. also keep this area built of this kind of community also in the new area and how is it? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for your question. That is very important point actually. Yes, before, before the modernization, maybe the one family is staying longer. But nowadays, there's so many migrants and migrants. <laughs> it's an exchange of the population and we have so many. And uh, uh maybe uh, the that situation is but uh, not so strange 
in Kyoto because Kyoto used to be the capital city. So they are a little bit used to have new people. <laughs> every, every time they will encounter with the new people, I think. And uh, so that is a kind, uh, one of the, the system of the uh, community. Uh, community system, they have very strong one. And uh, that is the kind of the education of the, the, the people themselves to have experience about the school, to have experience about the other group and then to become uh, finally the, the, the several important person in the community. That is uh, uh, maybe their basic system, I think. And at the same time, Elementary school now is very important welcoming the new people to succeed the, the tradition and the, the culture for the people from Tokyo, from Osaka, from other places, sometimes from the, the foreign countries came to Kyoto to have their own family and the houses and to keep the, their children in the elementary school and they can have the experience. And and the, the most uh, recent things I heard from the, the principals, uh, sometimes nowadays, uh, the, the good, gr younger people who graduated from the elementary school uh, came back to Nishijin uh, because they like to have their children in that elementary school. <laughs> and it, Oh, most of the younger generation must go to Tokyo in one, one time or two time because they have uh, starting their own career. And uh, it is very really general things, but uh, some of them likes to be back to Nishijin because of the elementary school. That is quite uh, proud <laughs> of the elementary school and the successful things. So I hope this uh, evidence will continue to be more and more and more attractive. And uh, but uh, it is a bit recent and small evidence. But we hope. And uh, so the maybe the, the elementary school system is very suitable for them. I think. Yeah, in especially in Kyoto, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe one more comment. Utwita. Yes, I, I just want to also introduce to all of you. I have oh, my colleagues okay. here. Is Professor okay. Yusmar Yusuf? Pak Yusmar, can you open your slides? I want to introduce Yusmar. you. He is the one that uh, show me the word of Saujana back in oh. two thousand three. He is a professor and a Yusmar. University in Sumatra, in Riau. Oh, maybe he is, is still not in this. But uh, anyway, he always attend our, our, our forum. So later on, I will <laughs> ask him also to <laughs> introduce himself. Because uh, one day, uh, we were in a meeting of the preparations of Indonesian strategy of cultures. And then I asked him, what we supposed to translate word culture and then Professor Ismar mentioned, why don't you use saujana? And then I mentioned, what is saujana? I don't know. <laughs> this is an Indonesian dictionary. So it's called as far as you can see. So that's why. After that, then we discuss with uh, our colleagues that Indonesia that we made our charter. And finally, we use the word of cultural landscape, the terminology in Indonesian word that is Saujana. So we use it up to now. <laughs> Just a oh. story of this. Pak <laughs> Yusmar. <laughs> okay, uh, Pusita, still uh, time? We still have time or? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's enough, yes. Okay. that we will prepare for our future collaboration. And please, uh, please put also your ideas for the participants for full registrations of the Summer Cross to also mentioning about the future collaboration in this case. 
So it will be also part of your assignments then. Okay. And then uh, the next public forum will be in what? Uh, 21st yes, of I May, think yeah? maybe uh, can be also shared in this case. Yes. Mm -hmm. So next will be on oh. the Friday, oh. May uh, 21. So the opening remarks will be our Minister of Transportation. Oh, he's questioning why him. <laughs> And he is an architect from our university. And he is a vice chairman of the alumni associations of in Universitas Gajah Mada. So this is uh, actually he and us right now working of thinking that architecture infrastructures is the concept of one plus one is not two but seven. The others will be value, will be economy, will be culture, heritage, and, and others. Of course, the community, uh, the role of community as well. So, so he will join us. And then uh, at the panelists will be Dong Piha, anthropology, CS program specialist for culture, UNESCO Bangkok office, and then Professor uh, Dr. Kei Chang, archaeologist and art historian in the National University of Arts, uh, Taiwan. And then Professor Dr. Insinyur Pakti Setiawan, a good friend of Ibu Dwita. <laughs> uh, professor in the Department of Architecture and Planning, Faculty of Engineering, UGM. And then Dr. Ege Yildirim, he is urban planners that specializing in heritage conservation uh, management. Owner of IK Yildirim is the studio, environmental conservation organization in Istanbul, Turks. And he is the one that uh, participate in the preparing of the uh, recent publication of ICOMOS on the heritage and SDGs and will be moderated by Ibu Siti Nurul Rafiko or Ibu Fifi. So this is our program next, after uh, two weeks from now, because next week we will have the Muslim day. So everything will be then holiday for us. So the program will be uh, two weeks from now. Okay. And yes. That is for now. Yeah. And thank you very much for it with Twitter. Do you want to say something? Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you to uh, all the panelists, uh, Prof. Kanki, Ulri, uh, Mutia, and Pak Pai, also Pusita, <laughs> of course. Yeah, and also all the participants. Okay, to close. So, Terima kasih. Selamat buka puasa. There will be a songs from us and please come again for two weeks from now. This is a song of Asmara Dana that is uh, combined between pentatonic music and modern music. Okay. And written by the Guru Soekarno is the son of our first president. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Stop. Let's stop. I don't know. Maybe there's. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Nice uh, evening. Hey, Bu Susana. Oh, terima kasih welcome. banyak luar biasa, luar biasa. Ah, terima ya, kasih. Ibu, ibu Susana is from Salatiga. Satya yeah. Wacana ya, Ibu. Satya Wacana. Ya, yeah, thank you for okay. join us. Yeah, Pak Edi Arinto, thank you. Pak Anto. Arina. Dr. Laura, thank you, thank you for joining us.
Mariko, thank you. <laughs> Mariko, sang arigato. <laughs> thank you so much. It's so exciting. Okay. <laughs> ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。See Terima kasih Mutia bagus presentasinya. Let's join our collaboration, Pak Uu. Thank you, our collaborator. Pak Mutia luar biasa. Terima kasih Bu. Iya, bagus ya. Terima kasih banyak Bu semuanya. Terima kasih. Bagus ya. Selamat. Ya, ya. Selamat berbuka puasa. Ya, terima kasih. Eh, izin, ini saya sudah berpuasa ini. Oke, okay, ya terima kasih. Mohon izin pamit.